Our quality bungalows with two, three, or four bedrooms, or our story buildings, three or four to five bedrooms at very affordable prices with flexible payment plans at our Sanyang Sea View Estate, where you can enjoy the cool breeze with modern infrastructure such as the roads, covered drainage system, modern electrification with street lights, gated entrance with security posts, and social amenities such as gas station, shopping mall, medical clinic, park, schools, children daycare, and a lot more. Our dedicated team of professionals will keep the estate clean at all times, provide security and patrol team within the estate premises, install latest technologies such as CCTV, TV, Wi-Fi, home network installation, solar panel, and power backup system. Also, check out for our additional home facilities and interior design service, such as premium tiling, wall plaster, home landscape, fingerprint home lock, and a lot more. Visit our office at Senegambia Kololi Highway and get a free site visit tour or contact us on 4464-838. WhatsApp us on 32. 59220 or you can visit our Facebook page or Instagram on EJ Investments. EJ Investments, we are first in properties. When we touch down, but I broke down. Gamtel G-Fiber, now you can enjoy super fast internet in gigabytes. G-Fiber is affordable, stable, secured, and accessible to homes, businesses, and enterprises. With Gamtel G-Fiber, the future is speed. Gamtel, creating a brighter future in communication. Oh, sorry, I forgot to tell him. Are you guys talking about money transfer to buy provisions? Yes. yes. But don't you know about Baluo? 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 What is Baluo? Baluo is a service that your son can use to send provisions directly to you guys from the shop. And you don't have to worry about the exchange rate. Tell me how Baluo works. It's very simple. Just log on to baluo.com and shop or download the app on your phone. You can shop on the website or using the app to buy online basic products for your family and friends. With Baluo, you decide what your money is spent on. Your money, your choice. Buy online products for your family and friends in the Gambia, Senegal, Nigeria or Mali. Baluo, better than sending money.
to the brunch live on Kepa 12 Love in Cham. Uh, welcoming you to our weekly current affairs program. Thank you for joining us wherever you are watching us across the globe. This week we will meet the Ancestors who've been taken away uh, to slavery in America and around around the New World, as it used to be called. They are found in many African countries, including the Gambia. In this one hour, we will try to explore uh, what code stands for, what has been their activities, and what are their objectives um, over the last weeks. Like I said, they've been on radio and television talking about it. So I'm pleased to welcome Adrian Ryan. Ryan and his wife, Juliet Ryan, if I, if I pronounce your surname well. You can call me Nyancho Kajabi. No, your local name is Nyancho Kujabi, and uh, he is Hadib Idrisa Kujabi. Kujabi. So you are both Jolas. Welcome. You are integrated already. <laughs> 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 chef. Abaraka. Good. So, Council of African Descendants, you call it CORE. Let me first ask, uh, uh, my first question would be, Council of African Descendants, where did it start? Where did the whole concept come? <laughs> well, it was actually it actually came from me and my wife and um a few other members. What what it is um we was campaigning for a while as Black Sit. So we went and we met with a lot of our um, authorities. But um one of the questions that they do ask us if we have an organization that represented us here. So I sought to come back to the community, put it out there check to see if there's any other um, any other um, association that represented us that is legally here in the Gambia. But we checked everywhere and there was none. So a group of us decided to come together, work on it, and then go and register it. So well, it's I actually being registered. Um, we have membership here and we have membership abroad. So we are the last time I checked my group, we have over 70 something people that actually in court. But for paid membership, we have around 30 members. Yeah. Good. Um, um, Blacksit. Yes, go ahead. Just to explain yeah. so, uh, Blacksit is a YouTube channel, it's a media, it's a, it's a platform. And um, Blacksit was founded to really share about our experiences leaving England and um, coming to live in the Gambia. So it's about our uh, homecoming, our, our relocation home, our settling in back home um, in the land of our ancestors in our origins. And so um, via um, our channel, which has over three and a half million viewers, um, and as a result of those three and a half million views, code has been expanded all over the world and so as such, we're going to go and launch a, a digital platform in order to embrace a digital membership of code um, because there's over 200 million diasporans uh, just between America and UK and, and parts of Europe. So we want to embrace those so that we can actually have a proper program um, uh, for relocation and repatriation. So that's what's important. So the Council of African Descendants, the actual name, um, I uh, decided to put that forward to a group and um, there were other names put forward but that was the name that we all agreed on and um, I think it's the right name because of the connotation. Council, you know, is also a very strong word 
just like you have, you know, the, the Council of uh, uh, of Union of, of Europe, you have many strong councils and every district has a council. And so because of that, we're made up of people who all have the same aims and objectives. And one of those is to make sure that we can attract inward investment into, you know, the Gambia and Africa as a whole. This is a pan-African organization. So it's about um, us having a, a, a welcome home. Very important that we have this welcome home. Yeah. Um, I can't emphasize how important that is. Yeah. And of course, you know, we have um, had a great welcome from the National Assembly recently. Absolutely, Absolutely wonderful. Yeah. And they have formed a pressure group. There's 23 members uh, of parliament Good. who have formed a, a pressure group, which has been led by the Honorable um, Suleiman Saho wow. and yeah. also, yeah, Saku Marong. Mm. Uh, and so, yeah, so this isn't political, this isn't political, yeah, this is uh, what you said today, which is it's about vision and not division. Mm -hmm. So we need to be visionaries and not, and not divisionaries. Mm -hmm. And so this is what it's about because people think we're being political, we are not being political. No, no. We can't even vote. So <laughs> there's, we're, we're not political. What, what we are, yeah, is African and we need to be accepted as Africans. When we're in Europe, we're called Africans. Africans. And then when we come to Africa, we also need to be called Africans yeah. and, and not yes. Europeans. So that is the reason why um, Blacksit was also um, created to act as a desensitization mm -hmm. um, mode, yeah? So that you would understand that we are the same. Mm -hmm. It's very important that you understand that we are the same. The only thing that has been different is our exposure to a different culture and being born in a different place. If you had a niece or a nephew that was born in England. So that's the case. We have people who are born there. When they come here, they look different. <laughs> you know, but then we always know that this is Mr. Champ's son or Mr. Champ's grandchild who, you know, whose mother went to the UK. Yeah. That doesn't make them, you know, people British. Know. They right. always come here. So it, mm -hmm. it makes sense. It's the same, it's the same thing you're talking about. Yeah. Exactly. Good. So let's go back. You people are from the Caribbean islands. Which country were you born? Right, I was born in the Caribbean island of Montserrat. Oh, okay. And that's an um, island um, just very close to Antigua. Okay, Antigua, yes. Yeah, I always suffer from a volcano. Okay. So that was my reason why I ended up in England. In England. Yeah, because we're still a British dependent territory. Exactly. So slavery wasn't that far away. Oh, yeah. Because there's still, there's still colonies yes, in the course. Caribbean. Okay. I think there's still two. Is Barbados now independent? Long time, long time. Yeah, it is now. I think it might only be <coughs> Montserrat and Anguilla, I think, is the only two. The only two, yeah. yeah. But I will research it again. But I know definitely Montserrat is still a colony of Britain. And you made you did, is it? Uh, no, no, okay. not at all. I was actually um, born in um, East London. Oh, okay. That's and so oh, I, was, oh, I was born in England. Okay. And so I'm first generation born, yes. born in England. Yeah. Um, my parents and uh, my four parents um, originated from slavery in Jamaica and so um, that's how I knew actually that I was Gambian was because my grandma uh, my grandma's mother's mother had told them that we originated from a place called Cambia but I didn't realize that in Manzinka they spoke Cambia as Gambia but I did know that because I heard words like Nyam and in Jamaica Nyam means to eat. Yes. Yeah. Nyam here, uh, fuller. Yes, exactly. Yeah. So there's many um, defadem. You understand? Yeah. There's many, um, if, and I think that's why the relationship yeah. between Gambia and Jamaica is so close because we originate yeah. from Gambia, and you can't. I could take you into Jamaica, and no one would know that, that you was a Gambian. Gambia, yes. That you look unless until I speak the first word, yeah. then they will know. Not even because oh, you even said a little bit <laughs> fatwa, you know. Okay. They wouldn't know where we come from. <laughs> if you say me, wouldn't know where we come from. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they wouldn't know. Yeah, so we, we we are the same. It's just cultural differences. We eat sweet potato cassava. You understand? Yeah, Yam, yeah. same said way. We eat fish, same said way. We you was, understand? I mean, yeah. The all of those who, uh, you know, in Jamaica, all originally come from Africa. <laughs> I mean, they went there to work for British plantation owners or etc. Malmo, yes. you may you may have taken interest in these people's uh, history. I know 
being, being a university lecturer. How do you see the cause of corn, so to speak? Yeah, the topic, uh, basically when we talk about, you know, slavery and things that had happened before, it actually makes me sad mostly. But of course, for me, I've been watching all they've been doing, yeah. and it's a very genuine cause for me. Mm -hmm. And I think these are people that do not even need to put a voice for us to really accommodate them back in our society because they are our own brothers and sisters. Yeah. So it shouldn't even take one a minute or a blink of an eye to say, look, this is your passport and this is your citizens and this is your home and this is where you belong. Mm -hmm. So generally, I think they're on the right course, and of course, it shouldn't take one or an alcalo a minute to tell you, welcome home. Mm -hmm. and Thank basically, you. Basically, this is your land. You can go and plant your cassava, and then mm -hmm. life is back to normal, and we are all brothers and mm -hmm. sisters, just like the return of a brother or a return of a sister back home. Mm -hmm. So for me, that's basically how I say it. So I think it's the right thing, and mm -hmm. of course, it's, it's great to have your own brothers to talk about things that had happened before. Yeah and to have people who are wanting to come home. Absolutely. Yeah. Sweet home. Yes, I was Definitely there. is. Uh, in the 1970s, in the First Republic, this Gambia government had a policy of encouraging what we call home cutting, uh, which yes. used to attract people like you. Uh, yeah. The idea was very strong in the, in the 1970s. Uh, mm -hmm. I remember there were representations, you know, of Gambia around the globe or in Africa where such meetings uh, happened. I remember there was one particularly I, I witnessed that in Banjul, Reverend, Reverend Sullivan was it, was it, and Sadao De Jawara, the then president, went to that meeting and presented him with a passport. Um, it, it, so we had also have roots, which mm -hmm. basically we are the first African country that tells the whole world that actually most of these Africans come from the Gambia. Alex Haley led that way. Yeah. So when you come to the Gambia, uh, how, let me first ask, how are you integrated? I understand you people are in Busura. How are you received? They receive us just like, welcome home, you're home now. Okay. The people receive us. Very well. The people beautiful. You know, I mean, now the government, the members of parliament, yeah. giving us hope. Okay. We have reached out a few times to have an audience yeah. with His Excellency. I understand now mm -hmm. you have uh, asked um, for an audience with the president to, mm -hmm. uh, to, to, to touch base with him and to put him in the picture. Um, mm -hmm. If you meet him, which hopefully will happen sure. <laughs> Nothing's materialized as <laughs> yet. Sooner or later. <laughs> what would be your message to him? Mm. Well, I, I would ask him what's taken so long. We've been waiting <laughs> since the, yes. the 27th yes. of December yes. 2019, and we've seen so many other people, so many other nations um, from, yes. from people yeah. from different places, different countries. We've seen people come over from the UK and within two weeks they've got an audience. Okay. You know, we've seen artists come yes. and get an audience. Oh, I see. And so for, yes. for, for us, yeah, and I have evidence, you uh, know, to support what I'm saying. Yeah, no. So the first thing I would ask him, does he have a problem with us <laughs> coming <laughs> home? Because no, I need to know, yes. I need to know, mm -hmm. just so that we can be clear, yeah, yeah? Mm -hmm. so we can set the, the, the paradigm moving forward. Because it's very important that the leader of a country leads a country into success. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And so that comes with unity. And so I want to know if he has an issue with our unity in the community. <laughs> you see? And so it's important because I absolutely adore the man. I adore Adam Abarro, okay. yeah? His Honourable Excellency, yeah? I can see the difference in people. I've been coming here since 2011. Oh, really? Yes. That's and so. That's right. Now, yeah. That's right. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, that's the reason why I'm absolutely keen to see him. So it's almost like a, a personal to say, you know, congratulations, because someone who's coming from England, who lived in England, worked in England, and now comes back to be the president. Come on. That is like the number one success story ever, ever, ever. 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 And so for me, it's like, I just want to even just embrace him and say, like, well done. Congratulations. We're so proud of you because you give everybody hope. Absolutely. And that's why I'm a little bit disappointed in a way, because I'm impatient <laughs> really, like that. You really okay? So it's a personal thing that I'm you, just a little bit impatient because I'm so excited to meet you him. You will eventually get to see him. When you do, I want to ask you, how would you uh, portray corn to him? Like uh, you, you recently demanded or asked or, re or requested to be accorded citizenship because in that way. Yes you find that you are more and fully integrated and you know you formally welcomed so how would you tell that the president 
Apart from embracing him and congratulating him. For <laughs> well, well I think I mean both of us Adrian. have got our different approach. So I'll let Adrian go first. Will be your approach. <laughs> Adrian, let Adrian go first. Mm. Yeah. Um, he, 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 I, I can guarantee you that he is watching the program. Well, we'll yeah. watch it later in the okay. evening. Okay. No doubt about it. Yeah. Okay. What I'm saying, um, mm-hmm. I respect His Excellency. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, he take on a major task. You know, and um, I know he's doing the, the best job to his ability. Um, when you look at the Council of African Descendants mm-hmm. coming home, we're looking at lawyers, we're looking at doctors, we're looking at professors. Mm-hmm. We're looking at people that top the game. And these, they, they contact us as Black Sit, as Code, and they're willing to come and volunteer the services. You know, we, we, we have a whole lab in our office for eyeglasses, and this was sent by, um, what's his name? Oh, so it was yeah. sent by the Cottage fam- Nottage yes. family, and that's Ariel and Santana Nottage, yes. and, and they've sent a whole eye lab, yeah. refractory It's a lab. whole eye lab. And these glasses will be given free. Okay. He said, "This is his present for Africa, for Gambia. Mm-hmm. He will come back and we make all these glasses, professional glasses, and he make sure that they go out to the community free of charge. Okay. That's his present. Mm-hmm. We have those equipment in the office. Fantastic. Our people out there that want to come home, mm-hmm. they want to come and they want to share the expertise share with it. our brothers and sisters here, mm-hmm. and together if we join hands together." we only will become stronger. Absolutely. And let's face it, only Africans got to work properly together with Africans. We only got us in the world. Everyone has discriminated against us. Yeah, so when you have the professionals that sold the property, give up their life in the West. Yeah. Give, you know, give up their life in the West, bring in the children, because a lot of people come with their young children. Absolutely. In school, investing, building homes, creating jobs, creating opportunities in this country. You know, ourselves, we create the, bo- the borehole in Buzura yeah. that helped the community. Yeah. We also was active in Nema Kunku, you know, and um, I was over there last night. Okay. So what we are coming back, we are coming back to embrace our family. family yeah. We're not coming back here to build separate community and to, we're coming back to show we are the same people, Absolutely. but we just raise up in different parts of the world. Yeah. But we are the same. Mm-hmm. We got to the same oppression, same persecution everywhere. For instance, you see what's happening in America yeah. with George Floyd. Absolutely. And many more that have lost their life, yeah. even in England. Absolutely, even in England. You know? Yeah. For no reason. So now we're coming back home mm-hmm. and what we're asking for is just for welcoming. Because these are professionals that want to come and say, yes, let me give back my service to Africa. So a welcoming is simple. It's a very simple thing to do. (laughs) Africans always have gratitude. We always been loving people. Mm -hmm. So when you realize that you're taking, well, I would say over 400 years to give a welcoming. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's challenging for us. Mm -hmm. We're all the same, regardless of how we see it. And um, what I also would like to say is that when we also coming back to Gambia, it's important that we learn the culture, mm-hmm. learn the language, and be patient. Yeah, you, some, are, you are already a jola, so I will ask you. <laughs> no, I'm jola. How can I serve? Oh, I know some. You know, I know some. <laughs> I don't know. I know some. You okay. know. Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, you know, we do learn a little bit okay. of, I say of the language. Uh, she done a lot better than me. <laughs> I said, Kawa, I'm going to do that. I'm going to do that. She done a little bit better. I was a Kasumai. Okay, Kasumai. Yes, mm-hmm. Kasumai. Kasumai came. <laughs> yeah, so we do, right, know, we do know. We do know. And we know a little bit more about love. Yeah. Ah, well, yeah. 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 I mean, okay, that's what I'm going to say. But even saying that, we're now going to have classes in our office. Okay. Yeah, so we're gonna have um, language, language classes. Language classes. All the languages. Yes. yes. So Especially people when come the children home. Are, mm-hmm. are sent to school here, they will they will automatically learn it. Learn it from. Yeah, that sounds good. Yeah. That, that's 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 the best way to get. Uh, yeah. So some of the purpose of court as well, mm-hmm. we also work as a like vetting, because a lot of people come to us and um, we will take the information, know exactly what they're coming here to do, you know, and uh, we also guide them in the right directions. Mm-hmm. As you see, we spoke to a lot of people like for policing. 
we could always call the PIO and they're always happy to come and give us an audience, you know, so that people would understand the laws of the country because the laws of Gambia is not going to be the same as the laws as in the, the West. Of the yeah, you many, know? many, many, yeah. many, many, uh, in most cases, uh, indigenous people are sometimes uh, a little bit insecure or afraid of newcomers because of the yeah. cultural class. Yes. So when you come across this thing, what kind of message would you tell? Like, for example, you will see, you know, native people who will be wary of uh, strangers. Yeah. Naturally, people are suspicious of strangers. I know. So I know this may be a challenge you will find. How do you go overcome that? Well, you could go everyone. <laughs> yeah. And um, I, I've actually found that, yeah, I've experienced that. Mm -hmm. And um, once I have a conversation, especially through the interpreter, mm -hmm. and I explain, like, I give you an example. I went to Sanyang and I sat with the Council of Elders mm -hmm. and I explained to them where I was coming from. And they told me that, you know, a log that is in the water will always be a log that is in the we'll water. It will never change <laughs> to, to be a crocodile. That's a common say in Mandinka, that's Yes. And so when they said that to me, they said that there should be no barriers. So the fear that they felt, yeah, yeah even the children called me um, Tuba at first. I looked at them, Tuba. I said, I ain't no Tuba. And so when we explained to them that our ancestors were taken, yeah. it made me realize that there needs to be uh, in, in the education, yeah. whether it's in, you know, the, the social education lectures or, or lessons that they have in school or at university, but it needs to be um, in there because even when my son, he studies, he goes to school here, and when I looked at his um, uh, social and um, environmental um, studies book, mm -hmm. it wasn't in there. So it's important, it's important that yeah. maybe we integrate that into yeah. You know these but studies moving forward. In the, in the social sciences, uh, Mr. Sabu can attest to that. Mm -hmm. uh, a little bit of things have been mentioned about the history mm -hmm. of slavery in the Gambia. Mm -hmm. We have famous slavery landmarks, so yeah. every, at least every student knows that definitely yes. there was uh, slavery in, in our history. Mm -hmm. But they're not connecting it with us. I see. Mm -hmm. okay. You understand? Yeah. There's a disconnect. Yeah. So we are the ancestors of those that were enslaved. Yeah. It didn't just end and go away. We, had a we, we are, yeah. we are, we are, we are the descendants. As Bob Marley of, said, we are the survivors. Yeah, we are the survivors, <laughs> survivors literally. Yeah. And so people need to understand that they think that we just got off in England and then that's where we're coming from, Absolutely, yes, or they, you know, from the Caribbean and that's where we're coming from. No, yeah. they they've got to see it's a long lineage, and they also need to follow the yes. pathway yeah. of 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 slavery itself. And yeah. the slave ships, and when you actually look at it, it's, it's the most heinous history. And there's no reparations. Mm -hmm. Africa has not yeah. collectively called for reparations. reparations yeah. And this is something that is um, very disappointing to me personally. Yeah. Um, when I was in England, I was a great advocate mm -hmm. for reparations. reparations. I still am. Yeah. And I think it's very important because reparations is connected to repatriation. Mm -hmm. And also, Africa is owed a great debt, yeah, absolutely. owed a great debt. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, this debt needs to be called upon. Mm -hmm. We were paying taxes in England mm -hmm. up until 2015 mm -hmm. to service the debt mm -hmm. for the compensation paid to those who enslaved us. Yeah. So can you imagine you work your hard earned money yeah. and the, the government take taxes to pay back the people that enslaved your ancestors, ah, okay? Yeah. And, and this money is owed to Africa. And it's time for Africa to collect. There's too many colonial laws Absolutely. still imposed on Africa. Africa. Even, even, even in our today, today, yeah, but today, today, yeah. today, colonial laws. Because it's the, that's the barrier to us coming back. Ah. That's the barrier. When you look at what Paul Kagame has done in Rwanda, in Rwanda. for example, mm -hmm. yeah, he has repealed and repelled so, so many, many of laws. the colonial laws mm -hmm. and this needs to you Be know across africa of course mm -hmm. there needs to be a magic fullification yeah, exactly. across africa to be fair yeah. you know because he has made a lot of changes mm -hmm. and i believe in the future of africa mm -hmm. i know that not only is africa the future yeah. but the future is africa let's get and down especially to, gambia here absolutely. let's get down to the brass task and and take uh, take us two examples in ghana where the African, you know, uh, 
I year mean, of return. Are so the year of return. Yes. Yeah. What were the procedures for it? Like you are asking for citizens when the Gambia perhaps that is done on individual basis. How are you connected uh, with a Gambian? Are you married to a Gambian for a certain number of um, I mean time? So if you are going to be given citizenship, you don't think it will require some legislation. Uh, it's good that you already met Parliament. Yeah. What kind of questions issues do you come across when you push these ideas? Yeah, um, Parliament was supportive because um, they yeah. said I want to start okay. a private member bill. Private member bill, yes. Okay. You know, so that at least they could look at it, and um, they they all agreed okay. that fifteen years is too long. It's too but long. But people like myself, I'm a wife. Mm -hmm. okay. Ten years know? already. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes, you want to. I come just want to add in that um, during the CRC process, mm -hmm. um, with regard to the draft constitution, yeah. Within the report, in, on, on page, I think it, it's section 188. You've done your homework on this. Okay. <laughs> but yes. I studied constitutional law. <laughs> I know. Okay. So, you know, I studied in the UK too. Okay. And so, um, basically, in, in the section under the report, they made certain recommendations. And one of those recommendations was that citizenship for us should be uh, between two to four years. Two to four years. Two to four years. Okay. I mean, I prefer to, but you know, <laughs> at, the, at the end of the day, mm. yeah, the program that we proposed, yeah, for automatic citizenship, mm -hmm. and a lot of people say, oh, I don't like the word automatic, automatic. but um, Israel loved it and has done well off it. Pakistan <laughs> loved it and has done well off it. You know, sometimes we have to look at, yeah, models of success mm -hmm. and follow and them. And follow them, yeah. Yeah. To come home, to be sitting here asking for a welcoming. Come on. <laughs> it's, it's it's all, it's, I've already gone to my whole ask, really. professional mm -hmm. career. Yeah. Come back here. Mm -hmm. You know, we help a lot. We do do a lot mm -hmm. voluntarily. That that's what I was saying. The professionals yeah. that have already worked. Yeah. I coming back now to you're give. already involved in community work, like yeah. you said, Nemocon. Some of you people were even helping the police. You have a project for the yeah, we police. Yeah, uh, yeah, yes, a yes. A lot. How did that go? Yeah, yeah it's very, very successful. Very it's, successful. In, it's incredibly successful. Mm -hmm. We're really, really happy. Um, we have um, one officer who started his master's program mm -hmm. that we support his um, uh, mm -hmm. his studies. Exactly. And uh, he came to see us because he just got a promotion. Mm -hmm. So we were really happy. I'm not going to say his name because I haven't <laughs> yeah, asked I him first. Know, yeah. We have another um, um, uh, high ranking police officer who um, is also traveling abroad mm -hmm. um, to do his um, master's mm -hmm. and we supported that program also. Mm -hmm. We also have young Usman Toure okay. who um, is a great Pan-Africanist, great mm -hmm. ambassador, he's the youth ambassador as you know um, for uh, development and um, he is doing amazing things and um, it was actually um, our interview on Blackseat that spotted him that went viral across the world and since then he has been to Kenya, Rwanda, um, mm -hmm. Ghana, um, he's even uh, linked with people like Nana Kwame also known as Jacob Caesar who's a multimillionaire who actually invited him to Ghana recently mm -hmm. and has come back and wants to come he is so impressed by Usman he wants to come to Gambia to invest Absolutely. and so we're hoping that a letter of invitation will come from um, Mustafa Taf or the um, ambassador at large and so that we can, you know, really have a union of togetherness. And I think this is what it's about. I mean, I know citizenship is a word. We are citizens of Busara. Yeah, we are. I'm going to give thanks to my brother, Lamin Kajabi, and, you know, also to Mr. Jallo and also Al Carlo, um, Al Fai, because, you know, and also to Honorable. El um, um, Sane, uh, Lamin Lamin J. Sane, Sane from South Pekama, who actually gave me my integration oh, okay. certificate. certificate. And yeah, I'm right. also co-opted onto the VDC. So I want to give thanks, you know, <laughs> thanks, to yeah. um, Mr. Um, Lata as well, yeah. who is the chairman of the VDC, mm -hmm. because I'm one of the first people yeah. to be co-opted onto a VDC. Oh, and I'm very yeah, proactive. I'm of the of VDC. So yes, I am. Progress I'm very there. happy to be. <laughs> That's interesting. Yeah, very right. proactive as well. Uh, very proactive. Active. In fact, Absolutely. we're trying to bring the first um, pyrolysis mm -hmm. um, into the VDC. I know you understand wow. about pyrolysis wow. because we realized they had an issue with their milling machine mm -hmm. 
and the milling machine they needed diesel and diesel of course is 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 not an affordable expense for all villages and we want the vd the the, the we want it to become eco-friendly and so we launched our first eco village so it's not just an eco resort it's an eco village um which is 550 by 330 um plus then another 108 plots at the bottom and this is complete and so people have already started to build and demarcate and so we're bringing new technology and um, a community farm and the community farm will obviously offer the food um, for villagers to go and sell for free so they won't be paying and it's a way for them to earn an income and the others will be obviously sent for our own consumption so 50 50 everything is fair and so the pyrolysis is because we noticed a lot of plastics and we said, well, why don't we just create diesel from the plastics and then you can use a diesel for your, for, for your milling machine. Mm -hmm. And so, and we'll help you to get more crops and more seeds. Yeah. And in fact, there is a gentleman that is with us right here, right now, that invested heavily and bought 16 plots. He's just um, also bought, uh, I don't even know how many kilograms, hundreds of kilograms of seeds. Mm -hmm. And it will be opening an organic poultry farm for the benefit of Gambians will be employing Gambians so that we don't have to eat exported chickens anymore. Yeah, and, and also we have Obama with um, his Keturah farm and uh, he has a place in, I think it's called Nyanga, which is in a freshwater belt where he wants to do rice production and we're trying to get inward investment for that. And so th there's a lot of really good things happening, aren't there, Age? Yeah. We sponsor families. Yeah. I mean, I'll hand over to Age. I could talk forever on this because I love Gambia. <laughs> yeah. I love Gambians and I love Gambia and I'm proud to be Gambian. I, I, see, I don't see a divide between you and me. I see us. I see we. Yeah. Uh, and that's it. And I'm here to stay ah. and I'm here for good. <laughs> yeah? Good. You are well okay. You are most welcome. Thank you. Adrian, yes, yes your yes. concluding remarks. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, there's a lot of um, potential coming here to the Gambia. Mm -hmm. And uh, I never did get to answer the question about the changes. Exactly, I was going to ask you. Yep, so yeah. um, you start now. we all have a responsibility, mm -hmm. you know, to create the changes and make everyone comfortable, mm -hmm. you know, and um, in line between respect. Mm -hmm. That's number one key. Respect. respect you move into a new environment absolutely. you respect the environment absolutely you respect the people the people you respect the laws mm -hmm. you know and you also learn mm -hmm. you know okay. i mean and some of us come with our ideas and say oh let's come and impose a westernized mentality now uh, let's find mm -hmm. out let's find what out. the africans want exactly yep that's the first thing because sometimes we could come with arrogance uh, you know, arrogance usually lead to ignorance. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So what I'm saying, we need to be patient, and that's what I was saying to my wife. Mm -hmm. We're gonna have to set up desensitization some programs. Programs, yeah. You understand? So, because yeah. I could, we, we could see it because we're dealing with a lot of people Happy. coming back, yeah. and I could see people from different areas how some of them moving fast. Yeah. So sometimes we're telling them, no, in Africa, it's danka danka. Tutti tutti. That's true, yeah. Yeah, yeah. You that, know? That's very true. You, you, you have to slow down. Yeah, Coming from down. America, yeah, yeah. you're moving 100 miles. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's, yeah. it's very common. Like, even even <laughs> yeah. people from the Gambia, when they stay too long in Europe, yeah. they come here and say, oh, everything's slow here. Yeah. You know? ah, it's taking me one year to get my passport yeah. or my ID card. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, so you find that. Yeah. <laughs> so, why are fit in here so yeah. well? Uh -huh. I grew up in the Caribbean, and it's very similar. That's it. You know, I said, yes, I used to carry water on my head. You know, we use our problems with water, electric. I live this life, I know what this life is. So when I come back here and I'm doing anything, it's genuinely from the heart. You know, because I've experienced it in the Caribbean. In the Caribbean. So what I was saying to my brothers and sisters coming back, mm -hmm. let's slow down, relax, relax you know? Get some of the Western mentality Tentis out of you. Out of it. Because yeah. what you're doing in the West is just chasing materials yeah. so you forget about humanity. Absolutely. Here in the Gambia, you will see humanity. Absolutely. It doesn't matter if someone is a top barrister, mm -hmm. he will sit there and drink a tire. sit and drink a tire. With his family. With his family. Yeah. That's humanity. Absolutely. What is happening in the West? I don't know what, what that is. No, they don't know. I mean, <laughs> it's not I, civilization, I, that's for sure. When I was training at, uh, in mm -hmm. London with the BBC, I, I see one, one African journalist come from Zimbabwe, and, and when he was there and it was time to mm -hmm. go home, he said, Oh, I'm going home. Where you can go to everybody's compound without permission, without permission. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you, that's why yeah. I ask, right? What, yeah. what, what actually really is civilization? Mm -hmm. Yeah, here. 
You meet people, you greet people, mm. you say hello, mm -hmm. you, you people come to my home, we sit, we yeah. eat together. And so that for me is what I call civilization. In mm. London, you don't even know who your neighbors were. Your neighbor could be dead in their house, no, you know, yeah? yeah? And you wouldn't even know. Don't you walk know, past no. each other on the street, no one says hello. No, says no it, it is, it's, it's cold. The environment is cold, the people mm -hmm. are cold, everything is cold, and racism is real. And I want to tell people here, especially because some people are very trusting, mm -hmm. yeah? And I want to tell people here just to be a little bit more weary, especially when I see, sometimes I see some holiday makers with some babies and some children and so on, just to be a little bit weary because they're not aware of the politics and things that are happening exactly. in the West and the prevalence of certain predatory crimes. Absolutely. So I want people to be aware that sometimes when the Europeans come on holiday, yeah. just to be a little bit wary, weary because we're coming from there yes. and we know, yeah, yeah? <laughs> where, where I was born in the same hospital, yeah. you know, I went to nursery, I went into their schools, I went to their universities, I worked with them, lived next door to them. Absolutely. And so I know. Yes. And so sometimes it will be good even if people said, you know what, Juliet, you use my knowledge, yeah? I worked as a project manager, use my knowledge. I'm here to be of service. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, it's a two way street. We're here to also learn the culture, learn the language, gotcha. learn the morals, learn the value, mm -hmm. understand family again, reconnect with family. That's one thing that we are totally, you know, divorced of. We have you know, family, but it's like we're ships in the night. Everyone's just working. But here you have real family values and we want to embrace those real family gotcha. values. We want to be integrated, assimilated and pushed back into the community with you love. Know, she, she raised one point. Um, um, one of the reasons this Roots Homecoming festivals mm -hmm. and the Roots culture and the, all the ideas around it is for, you know, people like them, African mm -hmm. descendants, to come back home in large numbers. So I, I, I would say that, you know, by naturalizing or whatever you get, giving them citizens, it's going to be a giant step, you know, towards attracting those kind of tourists, not mm -hmm. just uh, who come from England direct, but those who come from America, the Caribbeans. I mean, if we can have 100,000 of them, uh, they mm -hmm. are automatically more than the, those who come from UK. Mm -hmm. It happened they, in Ghana. And, in Ghana, and Ghana, 1.9 billion. 1.1 million. Billion. Billion. Billion, billion. It was one point nine billion, billion dollars, dollars in less than one year. Oh, I keep saying it. It's like you know, it was in Forbes. It was in everywhere. Dollars. dollars. dollars one point yeah, nine billion. Uh, and this is by us. This is by mm -hmm. us yes, African Americans. American. This is heritage tourism. Absolutely. Let's embrace heritage well, tourism. Of Sorry you to cut you, my brother. Nobody, you could say historically nobody can catch up with Dr. Kuruma's ideas because these are his legacies. Yes. Because he started much earlier with the. A papa and other things a long time ago but but, but mm -hmm. african countries such as ours who have got these roots you know much i think we have left it too late to capitalize on you know Conte can say no Conte no Kinte no and, no uh, oh, well, no we, 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 we could have been higher than we yeah. could have been we could have more of you than we yeah. have now yes yeah. totally yeah. But, um, i agree with that but it's not too late <laughs> Conte kinte spirit is still there it's netflix still run the new Conte, new the new uh, roots um um uh, series yeah. mm -hmm. and you just didn't capitalize on it but it's not too late it's still on netflix mm -hmm. you know so, so we can still capitalize it sorry age yeah. sorry me, the message sorry uh, yes you want to come in I wanted to say is an African coming back to Africa mm. and asking for a passport is basically it's an insult it's not a privilege <laughs> it's a right it's a right it's That's a right yeah. it's our and birthright we have the right to avoid to the right to and, return and, and, and to face bottlenecks it's an insult that is, that is basically mean, what I'm not mm -hmm. really getting from yeah. him I could feel how that feels exactly. generally in Africa coming back to Africa, Africa and yes. to ask for a passport Africa, I said it's a, it's a privilege yeah. it's your right yeah. basically you're African if yeah, you're in Europe you're African you're in Africa you're considered you're, one you're considered <laughs> black that's what he said yeah. he said when somebody told, told her that Tubab she was wondering how dare they call me black I come here and call me Tubab you, you find it strange and even annoying honestly yeah. but um I'm, I'm glad that much progress has been made. Mm -hmm. uh, you are a member of the Village Development Committee. Yes. yes. That's, yeah. that's, quite, that's quite impressive. And you've met the parliamentarians. All yeah. of them have shown solidarity. Yes. Absolutely. Yes. So what is so. now left is for, to, for us to drive this message, message to the back of the executive led by the president mm -hmm. that this is uh, a serious matter that needs attention and urgent attention for that matter.
Yeah. Yeah. I have every faith in the president. I have every no, faith. No, we have every faith. He, he, he lived in England, yeah. Yeah. so I have every faith I mean, in his excellence. He knows London very Honourable Sam Bajalo. Yeah. No, we forgot to mention, mm -hmm. we have met Her Excellency. Oh. Yes, we have. The Vice President. The Vice yes, President. Yes, we have. Yeah. We have met her uh, a few weeks ago. Yeah. And her words of encouragement was really good. Very and she is a Pan-Africanist. Yeah, of course. Much you know, travelled, much educated. She, she understands. Very intelligent. Yeah. You know, but she said, I stand. Well, you are getting on. older. You are, you yes. are getting, you are getting yeah, to that. Yeah, so. But the message... I'm sure she will clear the way for you, the yeah, president. Yeah. No doubt about it. A message I want uh, yeah. to get out there to the wider Gambian community. Yeah. Don't see us as strangers. Absolutely. See us as part of a resource coming back. We put events off. You know, sometimes we have different events. And I want more Gambians to come. You know, I don't want them to see us as anything different. different. Yes, we're culturally different. Yeah. But it doesn't mean that doesn't we can't now adapt a new culture, which Absolutely. we're willing to do. And this is our culture. Is richness, yeah. yeah. Yeah, the Western culture is not our culture. Mm -hmm. it's not this right. culture is our culture for us to embrace Absolutely. it. So we are here for that. We are yearning to come back and learn our culture. Mm -hmm. So when we do put up events, we invite Gambians. Mm -hmm. But don't Our feel, brothers and sisters. Yeah. Our brothers and sisters come. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's a networking. <laughs> You know, I have to tell my story that I experienced in the Caribbean. Mm -hmm. Juliet have to tell a story she experienced in England. Absolutely. People coming from America right. have to tell their, their story. Yeah. And we have to hear your story. Yeah, exactly. So let's go back onto the mango tree and sit down. <laughs> yes. You know? Or the jacaranda. Let's get back. <laughs> yes. yes. You understand? Or the mango in Bushra. Yeah. Yes. Oh, yes. 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 <laughs> yes. So, we, so what we have to show, we are resources coming to add. Because Gambians are educated people, you know, I've seen skills here, Absolutely. you know, that another sometimes just a bit of motivation, Maybe. you know, like we, we have a lot of young people that we help support. I'm a builder by trade, okay. so when I was doing my, my home, I have young guys that I would take and show them my skill, not saying that they're not skillful, ah, yeah. you know, but because I'm not a young, I have yeah, 30 yeah. years Past of experience in building, mm -hmm. you know, and I said, yes, I do it this way, you do it that way, we work it out together. Yeah. You know, so I wanted to see us as I'm um, coming back home, as an extended family coming back to share our knowledge, whatever. You know, because I mean, for me, we already built a home here, and I'm not going back to England. <laughs> oh, yeah. Someone said to us, um, uh -huh. oh, but if they give a Gambian passport, would they give up the English passport? I said, listen, we're entitled to dual citizenship, but I have family still in England. If they all come home, I'll come here with me. Yeah, they could come for a British passport and take it. Right. Only because if there's an emergency, we might have to rush back yeah. because I still have, we still have children there. Yeah. Yeah. But as far as I'm saying, I'm home in Africa now, and I don't even think about the West. Yeah. Because I'm home where I'm meant to be. You it's know? a better life. Actually. It's a better life. It's a much, much better life. And yes. I, I want anybody who's yes. watching abroad in America, UK, mm -hmm. Europe, yeah. You deserve a better life. A better life. And we yeah. all deserve a better life. Mm -hmm. You know, I know I see the brain drain, mm -hmm. but now you have the brain gain. Mm -hmm. No one's talking about the brain gain. Mm -hmm. We are the brain gain. Yeah. Yes. Yeah? <laughs> and so it's important, mm -hmm. um, for one, that we utilize this opportunity mm -hmm. as it stands yes. now, mm -hmm. where people are coming to the realization yeah. that not all that glitters is gold cool. in the West. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, we are trying to stop people from going the back way. Mm -hmm. We would rather create employment opportunities, mm -hmm. um, entrepreneurial opportunities mm -hmm. here and have a grants program to mm -hmm. help people to start their own business and maybe to train. If I could use my own skills and help people, mm -hmm. I will do that. I will happily do courses, run courses. I'm not even asking for payment. And so many of us are prepared to volunteer our services yeah. for free. I've been volunteering a lot. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I just think unity is the answer. Yes. Us coming together is the answer, you know, okay. because you're no different from me and I'm no different Absolutely. from you. Yes, I worked yeah. at the BBC for a stint oh, yeah. and as well, I didn't like it though. <laughs> that, that's a whole different story. But okay. what I'm trying to say is that um, what's important is that we recognize your skills, yeah. you recognize our skills, Glad we put we our hands together, together mm -hmm. yeah, and we create betterment for everybody without any disrespect, 
right? Because we're not here to disrespect. Exactly. We're here to learn respect. Because yeah. in the West, mm -hmm. there's not a lot of it. Yeah. And so when we come here, yeah. it's so refreshing <laughs> to see children that are respectful to their parents. Yeah. They take out their hand and they shake. You're like, I love that. Yeah, know. You know, there's so many things to love here yeah. that you wake up happy every day. Yeah, and I want everybody, yeah. you know, regardless of wherever they go, is just can't try and come home. Mm. Yeah, take your skills, take your money, divest your investment mm. and bring it here. And let's help each other. It can be done. Thank you. Yes. Yeah, it can be done. Because now you, you realize that Stevie Wonder now living in Ghana. Yeah, yeah. He you came know? here. Actually. And Dave he, Chappell. He, he visited here. Yeah. Stevie Wonder. Yeah. The, the comedian. Yeah. He also built a comedy school Chappelle. there. Chappelle. Chappelle. Yeah. Good. And as I say, when we work together, exactly. we have, um, I mean, in England, you see a lot of um, African doctors. Uh -huh. You know? How can we get our people back home? Back Let's put our resources together and build a hospital. Right. Africa been always ahead in medical than anywhere else in the world. Yes, yes. You're talking about the first successful open heart surgery Absolutely. that was done in Africa. Well, I know the Gambian in Russia who's a very good um, heart surgeon. Yes. So Let's get them home. Yeah. <laughs> Gambians are uh, champions, you know. You look at yes. Esafal. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. Look at Esafal. Look at Buti Dukman. Dutty Bookman. Dutty Bookman. He, he started the first revolution in Haiti. Kunta Kinte. Do you know the guy who actually established the environmental science program in the University of Gambia from Haiti? Ah, oh, oh, you see. And he's done a lot of work along the coast. He's trained some of us on, on, on coastal zone issues and all that. Which, of course, will be our topic in the uh, next chapter of this program. But for <laughs> now, Juliet and Adrian, Kujabi, um, and, and that is uh, Nyancho Kujabi, and in your case, Habib Kujabi. Thank you very much coming on the show and we will you're all, always welcome always welcome thank you we didn't even with a notice i um, mean a short notice you were always welcome and we hope of course uh, when we met the last time you would have been holding gambian passports <laughs> <laughs> now that that would be a wish that would a be dream a come true. <laughs> yeah that would thank be a dream thank you very come much true. we will yeah. go for a short break and mm -hmm. when we come back we talk about our environment and our youth and sports when we have the next uh, panelist in the studio. We will be back after this break. All right. Honey, did you remind him that the last time he sent the money, it was not enough to buy all the provisions? Oh, sorry, I forgot to tell him. Are you guys talking about money transfer to buy provisions? Yes. yes. But don't you know about Baluo? 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 What is Baluo? Baluo is a service that your son can use to send provisions directly to you guys from the shop. And you don't have to worry about the exchange rates. Tell me how Baluo works. It's very simple. Just log on to baluo.com and shop or download the app on your phone. You can shop on the website or using the app to buy online basic products for your family and friends. With Baluo, you decide what your money is spent on. Your money, your choice. Buy online products for your family and friends in the Gambia, Senegal, Nigeria or Mali. Baluo, better than sending money. To the brunch on Kerfatu Live. This is the brunch with Lamin Cham. Now, continuing, we have in our midst the Honorable Bakari Baje, the Minister for Youth and Sports, accompanied by Musa Sise, who is the president of the Sports Journalists Association and a member of the Gambia Football Federation's Press and Events Management Committee, among others. We still have uh, Omar Malmo Sambu, uh, environmentalist. At the, an lecturer at the University of the Gambia who is very passionate about environment and youth activities. He will be with us. First, let's do first things first. Honorable, welcome to the branch. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. I'm sure this is the first time since your appointment as minister. 
Yes, well, actually, this is my first time ever. Oh, ever? <laughs> yes. Okay, I guess you must have been here during the mayoral elections. But at that yes. time, of course, things were not as as, as before. But welcome. Yeah, nah, yeah, thank thank you. You're right. Um, I was here before in 2018 during the Ex discussion once. And, yeah. Uh, we have, yeah. But I appreciate being here. Thank you. And uh, good afternoon or, or good morning to our viewers. Good. In the next 35 minutes, we will talk more on sports. But since you are also the Minister for Youth and Sports, we will raise one or two issues about uh, matters affecting youth in the country. Yeah. Um, Musa will of course help us a lot in terms of uh, the preparations that are going on for this landmark achievement we made. We qualify into the African Nations Cup. I must begin with congratulating all of us together for that. Thank you. Thank you. And he will um, help us with the preparations from the football uh, house level as well as your ministry's collaboration uh, so that we have uh, very good preparation to that. And I'm sure Malmo is interested in that also. <laughs> All right, honorable. Let's begin by this. Um, when you come to, when you came to office, you really must have found monumental problems, both in the sports and youth sector. What do you think are the big challenges you have found, and how far have you gone in dealing with them? Um, yes, thank you. Um, yes, indeed, there, there has been a uh, lot of problems, and uh, until today, we still have a lot of uh, challenges at the <laughs> ministry level, and some of the the sporting and the youth fraternity act well mm -hmm. now in terms of the sports to start with um well most of the issues we had mm -hmm. the, in the sports was uh, mostly a, a lack of adequate funding mm -hmm. which, is, which is still uh, prevalent exactly. then uh, of course we had problems in the associations as well uh, mm -hmm. that has um, affected our operations when you have um, executive the former executive versus the current one right. yes, yes. and uh, sometimes people having uh, being executive members of an association for years and without going to it's congress and others are not happy with that yeah. uh, so these are some of the major issues that are affecting the, the sport but also and the outside the youth of course the, the most talked about issues of uh, youth unemployment mm -hmm. and uh, quite a number of issues that are happening around the migration issues yes. or the illegal migration acts we, we we call it so yes men multiple issues and but coming in uh, well of course let me also backtrack a little bit yeah there was this uh, the youth policy exactly. that uh, expired in 2018 and yes. we we are supposed to have a new one that started in 2019. Mm -hmm. Now everything was done, the, the, the draft was done and the validation and all that, but it did not move to cabinet no. for cabinet approval and uh, the start of implementation of that. So we had to quickly work on that. And uh, just last Thursday when we finally submitted that, uh, even though it has to be retroactive, because okay. it have started in 2019. So multiple things, but we putting our foot on the ground and trying to ensure that we address um, uh, those things as much as we can. This uh, new policy you're talking about, uh, does it have answers to these challenges you described as you found? For example, youth employment and administrative and financial constraints in the sporting association? Um, yes, it does. Mm -hmm. uh, not in the sporting part. The sport one also is has expired and okay. uh, we, we just we to uh, yes, just got uh, funding from uh, UNFPA okay. to, to review that. But okay. again, that also expired in 2019. Right. So the youth one... Can you remember, or, or can you get gist of, gist of some of the things that would answer this, or, or at least ameliorate some of the problems existing now in the youth sector? Oh yeah, the, the older one had um, the issue of migration, but it wasn't explicitly mentioned. Mm -hmm. So the new one comes out to look at some of those issues in detail. Yeah. The issue of uh, climate change and uh, how the environment affects the, 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 um, the unemployment of young people also has been captured in this new uh, uh, youth policy 2019 to 2028 mm. and uh, we've also addressed the, the young people's participation in politics okay. you know, that um, in the past sometimes young people are not very interested in that yeah. uh, except that they are supporting parties but yeah. not take up leadership role yeah. so we included those ones in the in the new policy as well so uh, if in top of my head at least there are three areas where uh, there has been a difference between the old one and mm. the incoming one okay and how soon you said you expect it to come into being well, Truthfully, though, if, if by practice, mm -hmm. I can say the, the the policy has been in place. Oh, okay. Even though it was not ratified, I mean, not not endorsed by by cabinet. Well, required. you started you started implementing. Yes, the we did. We did because okay. it's kind of a continuation of what was there. Yeah, yeah okay. And uh, you know, some of the news news things also we have to to put. Of course, and I forgot mm -hmm. the issue of um, the agricultural part. Agriculture. You know, part. because in the past, um, yeah. young people didn't take agriculture as a major issue. Yeah, yeah. Now they are, and the okay. government. I mean, the Ministry of Youth and Sports, also supported by government, yeah. is running this agricultural project we call the Gambia Songhai Initiative. The Songhai Initiative. You know, yeah. yeah. No. So these are all new things that are there, but mm. it's on, and um, 
we now need to work on trying to get the, the required resources, both from government, mm -hmm. but also from the, the private sector, I mean, specifically the UN system. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, um, you mentioned, uh, I, mean, I mean, since the change, uh, I mean, uh, to 2016, the issue of youth employment and migration, like you said, as in the other uh, policy, has been prominently highlighted. Um, we have this project such as the techie fee and all other pro projects supported by either the EU or some some donors, uh, etc. How far, in terms of impact, you think this have been realized? The techie fee, for example, was much hailed to be much heralded to bring a lot of uh, employment opportunities. Yes. If you're going to quantify or uh, let's say tangibly, how much this an achievement have been made in on the, in, you know, through these projects? Uh, well, I would not be able to specifically mention yeah. because yeah. I've not really had the opportunity to okay. uh, look at the Tefiki project as, okay. uh, as, a, as a project that's supported by the EU. Mm -hmm. But uh, what I understand so far is uh, all part of what they call the, the youth employment yeah. project. Yeah. So, yep, youth employment. Now, YEP also have the, the, uh, the Tefiki fee, it has the OMV, oh, uh, many or, other components. You know, and some other components as well. And they're all primary target mm -hmm. is those young people that are returnees, mm -hmm. you know, from the back way. And yeah. then there are some that are here that have not gone, but they are at risk yeah. of uh, embarking on that journey. Yeah. And the idea is to, to, to train them on mm -hmm. skills mm -hmm. and then uh, give them some loans or some grants to be mm -hmm. able to operate uh, businesses. So they have done a good job in that. Mm -hmm. um, there are some issues, me personally, and coming into the ministry, quite a number of issues that we probably think they need to change. Mm -hmm. Example, the duration of the training. Mm -hmm. They have these projects where they train young people for to acquire skills, skills. in six months. Yeah. And there is no way you can be able to train a young person to acquire skills in six months. Oh, that's right. that's Except that's for short. like uh, soft yeah, skills, like satellite yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. installation and some of them. But otherwise it's not. So these are areas that probably we need to work on. Mm -hmm. Now unfortunately the project uh, have only a few months to end. end. It's ending uh, December, specifically in January of next year. But um, uh, the truth also is that they have supported a lot of young people who are in agriculture, exactly. setting up gardens, mm -hmm. some young people who want to go to school, exactly. paid for their school fees at GTTI, mm -hmm. and there are some that they usually give for $50,000 uh, $50, mm -hmm. yeah. as a grant project that to is establish. The first grant, yeah. And our, our GSI also, the Turkey project also supported some of those things. So there has been support. Now, how much impact it has done, yeah. I'm not able to tell. I'll tell you, I'll yet. tell you the story of one person I met who actually embarked on the, the a trip to well so-called back where and his mm. back yeah. today he said well you see if i had known <laughs> i wouldn't have spent this amount of money going to waste my time yeah, yeah. on the and that was too techy so yeah yeah, yeah I, cited, I always said doing well we we, yeah. we just supported one who was uh, whose business was set up by techy mm -hmm. he's into poetry mm -hmm. and uh the, the revolving loan that we just launched uh, the president launched in december mm -hmm. december 9th yes uh we we gave that person two hundred fifty thousand. wow accept uh, a, a loan for her, him to expand on the business yeah and the setup was from Nelly. So, I mean, from, from Tech Fee. So, there are some good projects. And I was talking with a lady in LRR mm -hmm. uh, who also was supported by Tech Fee to set up a garden. Mm -hmm. And she's, she's doing well. And she mm -hmm. says she produces a number of crates of eggs mm -hmm. and uh, some quite a number of uh, vegetables that she sells in the market. So, there are great stories, of course. Okay. You know, that, that, uh, but on the other hand, some of the problems always involve youth crime. Mm -hmm. Uh, well, some people will say waywardness, yeah. all these things dealing with crowds. So I'm inviting Malmo, Omar Malmo <laughs> Sambu here because he, he, he's a youth activist as well. Malmo, what has been the issues that you have encountered that you think should be brought to the attention of the Honorable Minister? Yes, I'm very happy that the Minister talked about environment being put in the new policy, which mm -hmm. probably was not there before, and I've been advocating for this for quite a long time. Mm -hmm. You see, when you talk about some of these crimes happening and even the migration, the trigger factors sometimes could be environmentally related. Mm -hmm. If the environment is not supporting enough for agriculture to flourish, mm -hmm. young people wouldn't sit in the CRRs and other places. They would, of course, move down or either move out. Mm -hmm. As well, if you go down along the coast, if we're getting our livelihoods from the tourism sector, and of course there is there are these factories coming in and polluting the entire environment. Young people will be agitated because they are losing their business ventures. Mm -hmm. So those are things that are probably causing the crimes and other, 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 you know, things that we are, are not desirable in our community from young people. Mm -hmm. So having that in the policy, I think, addresses one of my questions. Mm -hmm. But uh, what I would want to ask is, there are communities in, in other parts of this country, because I'm running a project with the Ministry of Environment, mm -hmm. that you would realize that there is just one borehole in a community 
the entire community is dependent on it. Their animals, their you know, farms and all that, their gardens, all dependent on one borehole. And that is this young person who is doing agribusiness, very viable business. Mm. But access to water becomes a problem. <laughs> and these are young people. So generally, it's a societal problem that affects mostly young people. Mm. I hope the policy will take care of some of those. But basically, so long the policy takes care of the environment, I have very limited questions. <laughs> 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 you are environmental biased. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, of course, uh, uh, yeah, Mr. Malmo, thank you. But, you know, these are gradual things. You know, mm -hmm. some of the, not necessarily emerging issues, but at the country level, we consider them emerging because even though at the global level they have been on for them for many years mm. but because we do not have people like you bringing up to the attention of uh, the authorities mm. it has been left in the back burner so now that we are having a lot of activism around that government is beginning to realize that these are issues that we must mention in our policy mm. not just leave it to the ministry of environment or other ministries mm. but also uh, the Ministry of Youth and Sports, yes. what, what I mean, specifically also. because it has a cross-cutting issue and it has an impact on the young people and now we're beginning to understand that our policy must not focus on only youth empowerment and sports, mm -hmm. but also look at the other contributing factors that either forces young people to migrate or forces young people to venture into crimes or even cause unemployment and address them in the policy acts. Well, then we will go into developing the, the, the programs, the, 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 the plans that will then be guided by the policy to address those things in the future. Mm. Okay, uh, let's move on now to well, still youth matters. I, I, I have. Uh, I've been observing that um, uh, most of the things that make our youth to turn their back to agriculture, for example, is not just because maybe there are no land. In fact, nobody can argue there is no land, but the producer prices, most of the crops are not attractive. For example, you look at groundnut now. Mm -hmm. um, the, pro uh, the producer price of a ton, uh, it will be $18,000 at most 20,000. When the Senegalese competitors come, they put pressure on the in the uh, on the government agency, the GGC and the private sectors to put it to 23,000. Mm -hmm. If you look at the time spent on, you know, planting and tendering groundnuts, six months, for example, and then you have a ton which is cost, which only gives you 23,000. So some people might feel that, look, this is too little money for me to spend six months on, on things. So what do you think? Um, in terms of uh, encouraging the, uh, I mean, the youth to go back to the land to ensure that they are, you know, is, the agriculture is viable, mm -hmm. you know, and it has good, attractive, you know, producer prices or returns, you know, for the farmers. Don't you think that's not, that's one of the problems why youths are not uh, considering agriculture? It is, of course, yes, <laughs> it is. Uh, uh, mechanization, the inputs, the farm input, farm implements, and all of that is one part because mm -hmm. then. Uh, there is a lot of labor that is spent on producing mm -hmm. and uh, you know when you have a mechanized way of farming then it kind of reduces the, the labor cost okay. you know we've not reached at that level yet yeah, of yeah. course uh, there are initiative to bring up those mechanized uh, farming but mm -hmm. at least at a minimal level mm -hmm. now with regards to the price mm -hmm. Um, well, of course, this is now outside my, my yeah, area, of course, but, yeah. but then, you um, know. I think the, the problem is, is, mm -hmm. is not just about Gambia. Mm -hmm. You know, from my little understanding, mm -hmm. uh, prices are determined by the, the, the international mm -hmm. market mm -hmm. prices. And unfortunately, Africa as a continent, we do not have much say mm -hmm. when it comes to local produce and also how much it is sold mm -hmm. outside the international market. Mm -hmm. And that applies to groundnut, cocoa, fish, and all of these things that are produced locally. When it goes to international market, they pay a price. Mm -hmm. The producer does not necessarily pay the price. It's mm -hmm. the buyer mm -hmm. who tells you that I can only buy your product at this much. Mm -hmm. So I want to believe that government also looks at the international price mm -hmm. and they look at the, the shipment and all the other demo ranges and all that mm -hmm. and they put a price that they think is reasonable enough mm -hmm. to be able to satisfy the farmer but also not run at a loss on the international market. This is what I think from some, you know, just a little bit what I know. Some school of thought said because of the fact that we also lost facilities that will add value. For example, if we had groundnut processing machine, that used to happen in Saro. True. I mean, you get oil straight away. So, you you know, you, you get, you, you, you rip all the, you know, potentials from that uh, Crop, for example, if we have tomato pastry, you know, machines and etc. Those valued added mm. facilities is what we are lacking. That is true. Now, if somebody, it becomes the job of people like you, who is responsible for youths. Um, I mean, to think and create an avenue where all these facilities probably might be available to, to keep the youths busy. No, no, yes, now that that is true. Um, mm. As a ministry, mm. we are also limited because. Mm. 
and that's one sometimes I try to explain to people they do not understand. Mm. Maybe it's the nature of the government setup. Yeah. There is a ministry for trade mm. and employment creation. Exactly. That is not Ministry of Youth Sport. Sport, yes. But we realize that because we have the control of the young people, yeah. then we have a responsibility yeah. to work with the Ministry of Trade yeah. and to work with the Ministry of Finance yeah. to create some kind of an industry or exactly. industries that can be able to to create employment but mm. also mm -hmm. take care of the market issues that you're talking about. Yeah. So yes, Coming in new, the Minister of Trade is also new. new yeah. Myself, uh, the Minister of Trade, Honorable CD Kater, and the Minister of Women's Affairs, mm -hmm. three of us have started meeting. Mm -hmm. And our intention is to look into government and try to find ways of getting some resources to mm -hmm. be able to establish those kind of opportunities where young people can be able to employ. And um, quite a number of initiatives have been done. The, uh, I can't remember the name. There's this company now that is into uh, uh, chicken feeds and okay. hatchery okay. Okay. done by Edimas Job. Oh, yeah. You know, the two ministers in my absence went to sit at him mm -hmm. to see how basically can be able to work together to support mm -hmm. those kind of factories and those kind of initiatives. So yes, mm -hmm. there is. Um, a little bit of funding is there. Minister mm -hmm. of Finance, just two weeks ago, we, we sat down mm -hmm. and we looked at avenues where we can be able to tap funds mm -hmm. to be able to support that initiative. So okay. maybe in the next few months, mm -hmm. at least we will see initiatives coming up mm -hmm. that are meant to support young people to gain employment. Mm -hmm. But us, as a ministry, we are not fully responsible. We mm -hmm. have to collaborate with right. the other ministries right. to get exactly. it done. You talk, you talk about funding, finally, on the youth matters. I mean, why is it that the Ministry of Youth, not to talk about sports, which supposed to be, which has the biggest catchment, because you know, if any ministry would say, okay, I, I deal with the whole country, but when it comes to youth, they have you have the biggest catchment. Yeah. But why is it that successive governments give very little money to the Ministry of Youth and Sports? <laughs> you inherited that. How do you go about <laughs> to, to to let the government be serious? Yeah, you know, with with the youth and sports. Yeah, I but mean, we we engage in um, you know some kind of orientation to change the mindset. Mm -hmm. The reality is, mm -hmm. both. People in government, mm -hmm. past and mostly present, mm -hmm. and the general population mm -hmm. think that issues of youth and sports is very minor. Mm -hmm. That is the truth. Mm -hmm. And you talk to them, they'll tell you, ah, if in the Olira, if you follow, like, Lord, just, Lord, I'm it's, 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 Wow, it's, it's, you know, so it's, 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 they don't understand, mm -hmm. or people don't understand that sport alone mm -hmm. is one of the biggest creators of employment. The mm -hmm. people don't know that. Ah. They also don't know that if you look at the people, the, the highest earners in the world mm -hmm. are oh, sports, sports persons. Yeah. So if you invest in sport, yeah. you are indirectly creating employment mm -hmm. for people and take care of them, themselves, their families and their communities. Yeah. Now that is the mindset that our That's people true. don't understand. That, 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 that even, even governments, you know, fail Preto. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, that's why they're putting you know, money. like 113 million. They just take that this, <laughs> for, this one is for sp yeah. entertainment or yes. it's just for sport. It's that's, just play. Yeah, they don't understand. Uh, and uh, and like I said, for us, we're trying to, to make that kind of, those kind of messages clear. Mm. That you have 60% youth. Mm -hmm. So if you don't take care of them, you're, you're exposing the country to a lot of risk. Okay. Now, youth employment, young people not having to do, have an impact on the peace and stability of this country. Exactly. It has an impact on issues of environment. Mm -hmm. It has an impact almost on every aspect of the country, even on the economy. Mm -hmm. But now, so if you take care of their needs, you're also addressing the issues of security, you're addressing the issues of uh, crime rates, you're mm -hmm. addressing quite a number of issues. Mm -hmm. But that is not something that is understood. Yeah. And I talked to some of them in finance. But people in check that people like you, young people coming to government will change that. How, 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 how successful have you working on that? <laughs> no, no, we, we, I mean, before, before I came into government, yeah. I mean, uh, President Barrow and, and Minister Mambure Njai, they, they understood those okay. things. You know, the Minister of Fisheries have been supporting. So they have already yeah, yeah. started putting up more, putting in more money to the budget, youth mm -hmm. budget. Mm -hmm. And that's why we have seen a change in the last one year mm -hmm. in terms of even how much we invest in sports, how much mm -hmm. we're financing the exactly. national yes. teams and all that. Yes. So these are realities that the, the current one mm -hmm. are beginning to understand. It will take a lot of process, mm -hmm. including the people that are working at the Ministry of Finance mm -hmm. to understand that you do not just get up and say, this is how much we're giving you. Mm -hmm. And I don't believe that budgets are supposed to be just any amount. Budgets are supposed to be based on, on the needs of the people. Mm -hmm. And you provide it based on that. Yes, you cannot provide everything, mm -hmm. but you don't just treat you don't sports as the minimal ministry. Exactly. You know, I mean, when you're controlling a bigger population. I'll tell you my experience with a, a local government officer. Uh, let's say, it's a safe for. I went to Coba, the formation of youth, I think it's a development sports, they said youth development sports committee, and they told the Alcalo about the objective of the committee. They listed uh, some of the activities they want to do, like the Kasu, 
listing, you know, agriculture, something, and they mention about uh, sports and football, and they say for sure, well, you know, send you blue eye be bahna. Why man miri football that miri for? Miri for man bok for. So you can see the attitude yeah. that they yeah, have. That's why they I said it's not just government; it's, it's the population. People think sport is about if you follow, like if you follow, if you know nila, lolen chorek bahna. And even in our talking about the villages, if you go to villages, there is a huge issues when it comes to having when they have a demarcation, a new village. You want to create a place for recreation and sport? Nice. They just give you a small, a small place. place. What is sizable for football field, and that's nice. it. They don't understand that they need basket, they, they need, need athletics, yeah. they need other areas. Yeah. But that is the things that we need to change and encourage people. And I keep giving examples since I came. I know now it will be monoton- uh, uh, mm-hmm. monotonous, but I keep saying it. Mm-hmm. And that's just because it's recent. Mm-hmm. When we had the COVID, mm-hmm. Omar Kohli, mm-hmm. who is one player, mm-hmm. contributed 500,000 towards the, co- the fight for COVID. Yeah. As far as I oh, know, yes. he's the one person that mm-hmm. I know who contributed that much. Mm-hmm. Not even institutions put in that much money. Mm-hmm. You go to Senegal and you look at what uh, Sadio Mane is doing in his oh, village of oh, Bambali. Bambali. Mm-hmm. One citizen able to build school, build hospitals, provide employment for Thank young you. people. Mm-hmm. That tells you that if you invest in the issues of young people, mm-hmm. you have a, a, a ripple effect. Mm-hmm. Not just the individual, but his community and even the country mm-hmm. benefits from that. Mm-hmm. These are issues that we need to talk about. Not just football, but issues of uh, young people in the entertainment industry, mm-hmm. young people who are in sports, young people who are in the other sectors. Mm-hmm. You support them, you see the benefits economically, also cuts down on the crime. There's an increased rate, uh, crime rate in the country. Mm-hmm. That is, it's linked up to young people not being employed and it's sure. linked up to young people not having the basic things that they need. Mm-hmm. So these are all areas that we keep talk about mm-hmm. and hopefully people will get to understand. Well, there have been issues environmentally, as, as Malmo will agree with your, uh, in, the, in the coastal areas. There have been investments that people regard, uh, you know, will upgrade or will degrade the environment and the natives were up in arms against such investments and most of them are used. Yeah. Malmo, can you take us through uh, from Gunjur to Brufut, some of these environmental issues are what? And what do you think uh, the level of involvement of the youths and, and how can they be addressed by the Honorable Minister? All right, thank you very much. Uh, first, I, I, I want to bring into this sport thing that he's talking about. We're mm-hmm. still battling with, uh, you know, uh, Strasser Field, mm-hmm. where Brufut wants to make that a multi-purpose, uh, you know, sport complex. Mm-hmm. And I think that would be very, very necessary. And it's at a very strategic position. And I hope the minister supports that move <laughs> so that the community definitely gets that for the Gambia. Probably we that's, can have that's, that's one a point. second independent stadium. Yeah. <laughs> yes, place. that's true. <laughs> Fantastic. <Now>, on, <laughs> on, on issues along the coast. Yeah. Now, it, it, it's really true that since the change of government, we were open to investments and all that. Mm-hmm. Now, some of these investors, to be specific, sign mining mm-hmm. and as well, you know, the, the, the fish mill factories. Mm-hmm. For me, I think they're causing more damage than good. Mm-hmm. Now, simply, if you look at the sand mining, they, they're significantly causing environmental degradation. Mm-hmm. And some of these are dependent on the bargaining powers of those with money. And the communities are not directly or indirectly involved at some point. Mm-hmm. So the communities feel neglected in the whole process because there is no significant stakeholder involvement mm-hmm. now if you fail to i guess vdcs the right, are involved but, but this is the problem we are having as a country yeah. you involve the vdc and the vdc employ themselves as employees of that factory i yeah. think they are representing the interests of the masses no how you about do. the young people in the fishing sector mm. how about the young people in the tourism sector mm. the vdc represents just few people and mm. not really and the vdc if actually they are representing the entire community should always come back ah. to the community for another stakeholder just Discussion exactly and take back whatever the you know decision that the community make to the entire to the, to the other stakeholder committee mm. but if you are representing a people you don't hear from them mm-hmm. you don't talk to them mm. and then you are just representing them how and this is a problem from Gwinju to Burford all the way down mm. and the fish mill factory simply because a lot of young people you know these are coastal communities mm-hmm. a lot of our young people work along the coast either in the tourism sector or other sectors around Mm-hmm. So it is important that if you're bringing fish mill factories and they're actually going to cause air pollution, mm-hmm. that means tourists will definitely run away from these areas. Mm-hmm. And these are self-employed people. Then what would they do? It cripples their employment. And mm-hmm. to be honest with you, when we think some of these investments are going to create jobs, they don't create jobs. Mm-hmm. If you go down to the Nissim factory, fish mill factory in Sanyang, mm-hmm. I think there is only one person who works there. Mm. who actually was one of the members of the VDC, or probably the former VDC chairman in Sanya. Mm. So the rest of the young people who work in the tourism sector lose mm. their jobs because they are yeah, uh, fixed along the coast. And if we said we want 
um, uh, tourism development area from from Bakau to Banjul to Katong, uh, 800 meters uh, from the watermark, is reserved for tourism development. And uh, and we built polluting uh, and, and foul smelling industries around there. Are mm. we not defeating the purpose of uh, attracting tourists? Because they would not come there. And then we yes. will be limited, we will be constrained with these areas that, are, mm. that doesn't have factors. I'm, and I'm sure these factors are going to spread up to Bakau or in Banjo. <laughs> <laughs> no, maybe so. not. Uh, maybe not. I, I'm not sure because uh, Tomta, I don't want to comment on things that I'm not very familiar with, you know, since I came. But you are in the government. And this, this no, 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 I'm, yes, I'm, co I'm coming. No, no, I'm coming. I mean, I, what, I, what I mean, I don't want to comment on things I'm not familiar but that's the location of the factories. Mm -hmm. I have not had the opportunity to go around Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Brufut and uh, Honor Brufut, Gunjur and Sanyang, mm -hmm. to know where the factories are actually located. Mm -hmm. So that's why when you talk about the issue of the 800 meters, mm -hmm. um, I, I, I say I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. Maybe Omar Malmos would help. The factories are less than 100. They are less, 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 almost the on the water, almost on the waterfront. Okay. Because yeah. I mean, they they take, they take consider the load and the, I mean the walk from the sea to the. Okay. They always put them right on top of the waterfront. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, I know there is the, that kind of difference. Mm -hmm. And again, not not a professional in this, but. I know there is that issue even in Tanje when yeah, you yes. have uh, fishing, uh, uh, not meals, there is these um, landing sites. Around fishing landing sites and all that. So I think mm -hmm. if they are around the landing sites, maybe one can explain that. Mm -hmm. But truthfully, um, there is maybe some we need to do a more uh, coordinated effort exactly. in all this. Yeah. When you have a, an issue that is multi-sectoral, mm -hmm, instead yeah. of just one ministry exactly. working on the area, then you have all these ministries Ministry coming together. together. And then maybe have a, a licensing process mm -hmm. that everybody will have the opportunity to look at it before you can approve it. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure if that is the case right now, but you know there is one area, which is tourism, which is under the Ministry of Tourism. Mm -hmm. Then you have another aspect, which is under the Ministry of Environment. Mm -hmm. And then another issue, which is under the Ministry of Fisheries. And, land, you know, and then there's, there's another issue about the Ministry of Land. So mm -hmm. all of these mm -hmm. ministries, maybe at one time, have need to have a particular central point mm -hmm. where all of these things are discussed. Discuss. I'm not saying it is not there. Yeah. Again, like I said, I am not the expert <laughs> in this. But yes, yeah. we all agree yeah. that um, there are areas where we need to do more work wow. to ensure that we protect our citizens mm -hmm. protect our communities mm -hmm. and if it is about investment mm -hmm. you know investment is also about the returns yes. if the return if the, the damages outweighs the benefits yeah, you know then probably that's not a very good that, that investment look, so look into. yeah so but again um the licensing actually this is not me uh, mm -hmm. saying it from my own view mm -hmm. i heard the minister of fisheries mm -hmm. say that they this government mm -hmm. found the license there yeah that the license were issued before the change of government, uh, government yeah. and there were about uh, 10 licenses that were issued mm -hmm. they had to cancel uh, i think four or six mm -hmm. and give the the other ones okay. so this is from the minister of fisheries and i was in parliament when he explained this explain that's this. why i'm making it uh, public Reference. that the license actually were never issued by this government but mm -hmm. they were issued by the previous government yeah but well, the government can always have a right to review them when they when like you said the damage is um, greater than the benefits yeah in fact he was responding to parliament and that's okay. what he said yeah, he said if you terminate licenses that were have been already issued oh, and the are problems, here yeah. it has a, a, a legal a, a legal aspect yeah, implications. because they will take you to the international uh, courts in the arbitration yeah. and then I mean, totally, the government is right now a paying a lot of money on yeah. arbitrations from the, from the previous government termination of contracts. I see. And so they're holding on until whenever yeah. the time is it's time to review. Expired. Then they will review and, and either approve yeah. or, or, or disapprove. Or disapprove. Or so these are things maybe they don't come to the public, that's, that's, but yeah. uh, I'm not, again, the minister, that's but I had it in no, parliament. That's, that's, that's understandable. Yeah. yeah, that's understandable. Okay, let's go to come to the, uh, the most rosy part of it. We are into the African Nations Cup. Uh, yeah. For the first time, yeah. it happens on your, under your time. In your time, everybody will say it happened in my time. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes but true. then, like I has always told people, um, we should not go to this place just to uh, make the numbers. How to sustain um, our this level of performance? That's the job for football administrators, players, and more, and most especially the government. How much enthusiastic? is this government about this uh, project in fact how well do you recognize that we we probably have passed a threshold that really attract that really deserves um uh, i mean uh, commendation and recognition well i mean like okay. you have outlined uh, how the government was involved <laughs> in bringing yes but yeah no no of course um no we, we were all into this project yes. i mean 
from outside coming into the ministerial role. Mm -hmm. It's something that we all have yearned for. Mm -hmm. For many decades, Gambia have never been there. Mm -hmm. You know, all the countries did except us. And so we believe that it was our time to also do it. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, after qualifying, mm -hmm. like you said, we always talk about it. Myself, you know, Mr. Cissé, yeah. yeah. Kaba, and everybody. Anytime we talk, mm -hmm. our vision is clear mm -hmm. that we do not just qualify and stay we want to qualify and pass the group stage mm -hmm. at least for the first time and you know reach any any you know into whatever semi-final or whatever that we can be able to go mm -hmm. beyond that we want to sustain yeah. our appearance next at the afcon you know we want to be a regular uh, appearance at the afcon and we know it takes a lot of things management having the good uh, coaches having a very strong eff but also government supporting and putting in the resources and we are ready to to do that moving forward Musa, you followed this whole thing for quite a long time, uh, since the days of uh, the Gambia 11, I guess, up to now. Reflecting, uh, what would you think has been, uh, you know, the catalyst for this achievement? Is it consolidation of the efforts that have been in the past or maybe a new vision um, of the current uh, administrators or current government? There are lots of factors I mean respond to that and of course it's a build up, it's a process. And because I don't think any administration I mean that were here before would suggest that or want to be labeled as I mean a faltering one because they all were doing whatever they could to get us to this holy 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 grail of I mean continental football. Mm -hmm. I mean fortunately fortunately for everyone right now who are involved in, in running our game definitely would, would would want to seize the credit but it is it belongs to association football mm -hmm. to association football mm -hmm. to you know i mean and everyone you 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 can you can sit here and name a lot of men great administrators great players great coaches who had toil and put on the national colors i mean in all the qualifying round it qualifying uh, i mean tournaments that we went in just to get us to this far mm -hmm. you, you 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 cannot imagine how we couldn't or we fail mm -hmm. to right, with, right. with the caliber of players we had yes there were far and few in between mm -hmm. um but i think i mean the, the 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 crux of what we can definitely put up on the table and be proud of it and talk about it openly and honestly is that i mean it was a process a build up in terms of the number of quality players we are able to put together mm -hmm. at one given time and that is the level at which we are at the moment we are also very blessed also fortunately to have an administration I, I we need to commend the people at football house mm -hmm. for yes their foresight more importantly the government who are the custodians and the the, the owners of the national teams were able to put in the funds because be, besides the players being available if you cannot ferry them if you cannot take care of them if you cannot give them what is necessary or what is needed to get to those matches, play them, win them comfortably, and get us to Cameroon in in I mean, in, in January, then uh, nothing matters. We would have be, it, it would have just been another campaign that you and I experienced, went through hopes. I mean, we are raised high, uh, unfortunately, just for it to fizzle out. Mm -hmm. But here we are this year. Everyone is talking about, has been talking about. But to my disappointment, it has died down. Mm, the, yes, it, yes it has it has is it is it and from the public or the government level um, no i mean i mean it, this this is a good point this, uh, this is why in my individual assessment the honorable minister here just mentioned that we've been talking about this thing in our own quarters we've but it's not in the open that's why i started out by asking how much enthusiasm is government yeah. still having yeah but I'm, I'm i i think i mean the governmentally he would talk about what's happening in cabinet yeah. about it but because I, I don't know i don't okay, want to okay. cabinet but personally my discussions with him and other stakeholders you feel, you'd feel that the, the, the momentum is dying now the momentum has dropped mm. i mean from i mean the qualifying um, i mean and everything we're all caught up in it and mm. uh, we talked about it we start to envision we start to really think about what from now on to January, the campaign road to Cameroon, trying to look for, I mean, a cliche that's going to really sell mm -hmm. the enormous job that lies ahead in trying to really get everything in place. For example, Cham, mm -hmm. the two games that we played in, I mean, uh, I mean the, the last Congo two games, Gabon, yes. Mm -hmm. I mean, the Honorable Minister will tell you that the budget for those two games almost is over 30 million, close to 30 million dollars. Mm -hmm. 30 million dollars is only two games. Mm -hmm. And that is just to come and play and go. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Imagine if you had to stay in a tournament. Before, even before you go to a tournament, you yeah. have three windows to play in. Mm-hmm. You have June, September, FIFA and October. Windows, yeah. I mean, calendars in which you need to go and mm-hmm. play in. And these are all in the millions. Mm-hmm. Think about what is going to happen and keep you in Cameroon for 11, from the 11th of, or from, from the 9th from of the January. 19th, uh, hopefully. You know, I mean, yeah, why not? We, we have to, we have yes, to, we have to, whatever. we have you to know. aim high. It is a lot of money. Yeah. I mean, comparatively, I mean, we, I read in the press, I mean, in, in the Ghana, for example, the ministry, the, the government is, is asking for, uh, the, the federation asking for $25 million dollars. In Ghana, for example, in Ghana, oh, wow. and now going to forty million dollars. Oh, wow. And the government only. Did you hear that? Back yes, then? Yeah. <laughs> it is frightening. I'm it is sorry. frightening. Yeah, <laughs> but this is the also their up. campaign for the <laughs> Afcon and the World Cup, mm-hmm. and um, you know, and the government only can put ten million on the table. Mm-hmm. The rest they are giving out to the the private, private sector to, to, to copy. Yeah. And that is way, we way, way, copy, way, yeah. way beyond whatever we're thinking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are we thinking of five million dollars? Close to it. Why not? You never know, Bakari ever has plans for... No, no, <laughs> of, course, of course he has plans. <laughs> yes, of course he has plans. So okay. this is the reality and we need to, we need to talk about it. Mm-hmm. The reason why I said that it has fizzled down, mm-hmm. because I think for me personally, it should have been a continuation. Mm-hmm. The momentum shouldn't have allowed to drop. But don't you think time is now for us to have a, a body, a committee that will sustain... Now you're talking, you're uh-huh. speaking That's my, right. you're speaking my language yes. and the Honourable Minister will yes. tell Honourable, you, how, yes, how you yes, yes things have been happening, yeah. yes, discussions have been held. Okay. But for me, my reason is this simple. Mm-hmm. We are in an election year. Mm. And knowing how our, 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 I mean, our memory span, mm. I mean, we, we as a people, I mean, mm-hmm. I don't want to use this adjective, mm-hmm. Gambians, no. Mm-hmm. We as a people, I mean, we forget very easily. Yeah. We forget about mm-hmm. what we have done. And we are in something else. And come, you know, I mean, in the next couple of months. It, it touch a point. Would the government, come be, in the next would not the government months, be distracted by election? Come in the next couple of months, uh, the uh, entire elect, the entire population, not even government. Government yeah. is just going to do what they're going to do and they are gone. Well, well, government yeah, is very for example, they're the just politics. going to get done their money and they're gone. Hmm. But it is about any committee that is going to come in, hmm. me, you and him and anybody, trying to galvanize the, the entire population, hmm. you, every stakeholder, the ground or seller on the street, the youth out there, how do we make you think and reason and be involved in supporting the national team mm-hmm. with whatever amount of dust, yeah. whatever amount of money we can put in any kitty? So the, the earlier we have a minister, I, I, yes. let's, let's, let's hear you from you. How far are you working on getting a set of or at least a, uh, you know, a body that will work on all this, getting people to be uh, uh, you know, regularly uh, informed of the preparations? No, we, yeah, we are. Um, like uh, Mr. Sisi said, not not at the pace that mm-hmm. probably we would have taken it, yeah. but uh, we we're moving on. And uh, the discussions that I said earlier, it's mm-hmm. about consultations as mm-hmm. to how do we go about this. Mm-hmm. And uh, last week, um, one of these days, uh, whether Tuesday or Wednesday, mm-hmm. uh, the Gambia Football Federation came for the second time to okay. the office, okay. and we had that conversation. And they brought us um, uh, kind of a concept note mm-hmm. of how they want us to move forward. Mm-hmm. And uh, of course, at the same time, our National Sport Council under the ministry was also working on a concept note. Mm-hmm. Uh, Marcel shared it on Thursday, mm-hmm. I think. Mm-hmm. So we can tell that by next week, mm-hmm. we would have put together what came from GFF and what we have at the ministry mm-hmm. to have one document mm-hmm. that can be able to, 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 to kickstart the process mm-hmm. of setting up that National Tax Force mm-hmm. or Coordinating Committee mm-hmm. towards the, the AFCON in, in January. So that is there. Now, mm-hmm. the debate or the discussions to mm-hmm. keep the people energized and mm-hmm. keep thinking about it, mm-hmm. that should come from the media. Yeah. And that's why an event, uh, a program like this is yeah. good. Yeah. Now, and I told somebody from one of the network, I said, after we qualified, mm-hmm. there was only one program that was done by that, but that, 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 that platform. That platform. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. after that, oh, they, you yeah. know, they <laughs> <congratulate> <laughs> everybody, they moved on. They went back to about and politics, and yeah, yeah, and, all, and that's fine. But yeah. You want to keep at least it every week, you know, have something that talks about this football yeah, because yeah. we do not have that platform to talk about exactly. it. All we can do is to stay behind the scene and, and work on the papers and, and get approvals people, yeah. here and there. Mm-hmm. But the amount of uh, support needs to come from the public, mm-hmm. and we want to continue. It's um, what eight months? Mm-hmm. That is oh, not a lot, general, depending on the amount of money yeah. that we need mm-hmm. and the amount of logistics that need to be put in place, yeah. but also. The preparation of the team itself. Yeah, yeah. You know, I know the JFF is working on 
using the, the FIFA windows, windows in too. June and then uh, November Some and September, December, yeah. you know, to kind of prepare the team. Mm -hmm. They're preparing right now again, uh, not talking about the GFF, but we are partners. Uh -huh. They're preparing a, a, tra a training camp exactly. in Turkey yeah. that they're getting ready for June. Mm -hmm. And uh, we are waiting on them to submit the budget to mm -hmm. us mm -hmm. so that we can be able to provide the resources. Yeah, what are the things that uh, uh, people have commended you is that um, uh, in the past it was difficult to get government to part with this amount of money to yeah. support even the national team likely and, because and of poor relationship between you know the gff at the time and the ministry the government yeah. now uh, since you came you, you really uh, have turned it around how did you manage because of course, there have always been tr <laughs> problem with trust yeah. between the association and and the government, and the government. so how how did, how were you able to create this buffer uh, yeah, well, uh, no, partly I think uh, the commendation would be, you know, to the president, to the minister of finance, mm -hmm. they, approve, they kind of give us the approval okay, to okay. get what we want. That's one part. Mm -hmm. Now, the second part also is, it's true, it's, when, when you become minister, people come up with all kinds of things. Yes. When I came in newly, people came with stories. stories. You know, this is what they did, this is what this person did, and then, you know, do this, do this, do this. And, and yes, I listen to people yeah, yeah. and I take advices. But, and I've made it clear that mm -hmm. I am not here mm -hmm. to launch a fight against anybody. anybody yeah. Our interest, but you're not going to gonna accept uh, any, any any other club club business, also. <laughs> no, 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 no. Of course, no, no. We will not. We will not. When it gets to the when they do things that are at the detriment of our sports, yes. No matter football, volleyball, or basketball, we will act. But we are not going to to act just because there has been a fight in the past, past yes. that people want us to inherit from no, them no, no, no. and move on. No, you don't and that's know. what I said, no, we are not doing it. Our interest is, mm -hmm. there are problems in the sport, we will work towards addressing the problems. Mm -hmm. But we will also recognize that we have challenges that we need to fix mm -hmm. and we need to focus on what is good for us. Mm -hmm. And that applies to both the GFF, both the GNOC yes, yes. and all of these other sporting associations. Mm -hmm. So in terms of government, the, the investment is coming now mm -hmm. and uh, our focus is how do we, at the time, was mm -hmm. how do we qualify? Mm -hmm. And I've made it very clear to GFF the first time I met them. Mm -hmm. We are all anticipating qualification. We, government is ready to put in anything that is needed to qualify. Mm -hmm. And that's why when we had the conversation, then we started looking at changing hotels, putting them at the best hotels, mm -hmm. chartering a flight for them, because mm -hmm. that kind of ease up the travels yeah, and yeah, all yeah, the yeah. arrangements, uh -huh. and ensuring that the resources are available, mm -hmm. the boys get their bo bonuses and all that. Mm -hmm. And that also played in, in mm -hmm. terms of their psyche and mm -hmm. everything, their mm -hmm. physical preparedness. Yeah. We had this uh, uh, training camp in Portugal and mm -hmm. all of that to prepare. So. Mm -hmm. Government is putting in the money, and we will continue to do that as far as resources are available. But of course, we are not doing it alone. Mm -hmm. We're doing it with our partners as well. And we hope mm -hmm. that going into the AFCON, mm -hmm. not just government, but like Mr. Sister said, mm -hmm. Ghana is saying we have 10 million. The rest go look for it outside. outside yeah. There is a problem here mm -hmm. in terms of private investment in sports. Mm -hmm. There are only few companies mm -hmm. that are supporting okay. sports. The yeah. rest of them are not. Mm -hmm. So we want to ensure that private companies come in mm -hmm. and support our teams mm -hmm. so that we can be able to, to have excellence in sports. Maybe and that could have been also been the reflection of the level. But with this new hope and uh, the qualification, maybe Musa, private sector, you also are very active operator in the private sector. You. You yeah. must know, how do you get private sector attracted uh, to sports? So suddenly success stories like Afghan should make it easy for people like Africa and others to come back. Yeah, I mean, Cham, that's, that's very important. Let me, let me just, I mean, buttress one thing in here. I, I sincerely believe that... I Maybe Africa can, 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 I mean, hire a plan, Lord of people. I'll talk about it, but what I, one thing I just want to make very clear in here, as Honorable Minister mentioned, is that mm -hmm. I think there's a very sincere will from government, mm -hmm. and of course, I mean, in trying to make sure that the thing, things happen right. Mm -hmm. And of course, from the Honorable Minister of Finance, who, who is a very much a sports lover, who very much cares about what's happening. Mm -hmm. But the, the problem we also have to be, I mean, we face with that. He deals with the national cake. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, we talked about how mm -hmm. others will look at what football. Flo Lodi 4. There you go. When, when yes. And they would, even, they would even start, you know, I mean, Lo 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 yeah. I mean, because it's not a priority for us. Absolutely. But it's a priority for you and I. Yeah. And uh, for this, you know, that's, I mean, youthful population. Issue, yeah. And, of course, what it brings this country. And this is the thinking. And so that's why I want to suggest, and I want to put it very clear that it is, there is a will. And I mean, I sincerely believe that uh, because I know. Moving on, in terms of the private sector involvement, for example, there's a sports levy that is coming in from the GSM companies. 
a company like Africel, for example, my house, you mm. know, put in close to 2.3, 2.4 million dollars is a month mm -hmm. in terms of, I mean, the levy. levy this okay. is yeah. this is on the, the record. Tell those that and uh, I, 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 I don't know. Give Do an order. I, I don't know. I, 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 may have a cool 10 million every month. Um, because they cannot. If Mambo will not take all the money. <laughs> yeah, you know, I mean, if you, you need to tell Mambo not to take all the money. <laughs> if no, no, if no, he no, needs to buy medicine, he is very supportive. He's very supportive. Okay. No, you know the finance minister is concerned with a lot of things. There you go. What's your bucket? You asking 10 million health? Health is agriculture. No, that that will always be there. That will always be there. I'm going on because even our got people. They will prioritize uh, uh, health, uh, over uh, you know, education. Yeah, over sports. And, uh, over sports is the, like, is the backbone. <laughs> yeah, if, I put, uh, if you put a figure and said, for instance, I know since since I, I was appointed, mm -hmm. government have put in just football, not the other sport, just football, mm -hmm. about $50 million just mm -hmm. in between uh, September mm -hmm. to this month. Okay, that. Right? So if you say that outside, oh, yeah. and of course this is open, people will tell you, oh, why are they spending 50 million in football? <laughs> what about our healthcare <laughs> system? There you go. What about our bet? That <laughs> is the mindset. That's, and that's also a real it's it's something to that we need to change. Yeah. But of course, Mambre controls a very important position, which is mm -hmm. finance, and they are competing priority. Mm -hmm. But at a particular time, in the last month or year, mm -hmm. government also realized that qualifying is a priority yeah. oh, okay. and they're ready to Today, you know yeah, bring in the money and put it there so cool. next time you have another priority maybe they'll say okay football hold on a bit yeah. let's focus on this other yeah. side. and you know and in all honesty Cham, let me be in i mean just you mentioned i mean how bakari will get i mean a 10 million monthly mm -hmm. um but this is africa is the biggest and puts in the biggest chunk of money oh, okay you know mm -hmm. and these are things that uh, you know I mean, is going to form a very very big part in 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 in, in the funding of mm -hmm. the national team to to cameroon and their preparation mm -hmm. i i hope so but there is supposed to be a lot more than that mm -hmm. a lot more than that publicly from all other key players when we talk about parastatals and the private sector yeah. I mean, there are others who can be seen who should be seen to be doing more exactly and this is where the engagement comes in from this road to cameroon is a one-off mm. and everybody wants to be part of it but yeah more importantly yes there are gate crosses yes yeah. there are people who want to just you want the cheap um and entrance exactly. into exactly. but you come in with a price right. and these are the things that we will have to make very clear very open mm -hmm. you want to be part of a success story yeah. there's a price to pay okay Good. period well you know Another sector of people who will be jealous about the 50 million you talk about that went to football <laughs> is the smaller sports. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm incorrect that you mentioned half a million to some association not long ago. Is it uh, uh, volleyball? Volleyball, yes. Ah, that is, that's a good development. But then they will be jealous. They will say, look, look at these people. They're spending all this fortune in football and they're neglecting the other parts, like athletics, for example. Athletics, uh, I mean, you know. If I, if I was to respond for on behalf of the minister, I know he has his. Are you the minister? Oh, I am not certain <laughs> enough. Oh, if okay, I, if okay, I, okay, I okay, try. You know, <laughs> yes, you know, because okay, these right, are things right, we all pass right, right, about. Right, of right, course. Yes, yes. The Honorable Minister would tell I mean, because I know the, for example, the male, I mean, volleyball, I mean, beach volleyball, yeah. for example. They did very Olympic well. They, 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 Olympic they, they conquered Africa. Yes, they are the African champions. Mm -hmm. Of course, it's a two man, it's a four man team. Yeah, it's a smaller you team. You know, it's, it's a smaller team. Mm -hmm. So, this is why I want to say that, you know, they weigh in. Mm -hmm. This is a team sport, of course. Volleyball is also a team sport, yeah. but the numbers differ. Mm -hmm. We have, I mean, the female volleyball team that needs to go and, I mean, I mean, can't prepare themselves in Italy. Mm -hmm. And they you they need they need seven million dollars for oh. their training camp and you know all those things, mm. uh, but it is something that they need to look into. <laughs> well, <laughs> we had, yeah. are we not? Uh, and we, and, and, and we, you have the Olympics, Gina Bass, and I mean all these other guys. Are we guys all not victim of the popularity of uh, football? Uh, there you go. You know so. <laughs> but, but but you know, and this is what I tell the the other sport when they come. They complain that even yeah, on, on Facebook, you see, come on, complain. Of course. When we announced the five hundred thousand, they were they came to the office for Kotsi <laughs> That's the team that came from Nigeria. They mm. won nineteen, mm -hmm. and I and I told them. I mean sometimes. And that's how I prayed. I just want to be as straightforward as possible mm -hmm. in terms of telling people the, the issues. Football in general is not just in the Gambia. It's mm -hmm. around the so world. Everywhere. Biggest, football absolutely. is the leading sport. Yeah. And so you cannot change that dynamic. I mean, maybe you can change it, but it has not changed. Football mm -hmm. is the leading sport. Secondly, I'm mm -hmm. saying the team, the counts also mm -hmm. matters. Mm -hmm. In a football team, a normal team, mm -hmm. plus the officials and everything, wow, you're something. talking about 35 people. Yeah, yeah. So to take and care of their accommodation, now, now we've got to change. Bigger than that. Take about accommodation, <laughs> their flight arrangements, their bon match bonuses, and all of those things is different from when you're taking care of a, a basketball team or a volleyball team because it's a smaller number. Smaller number. 
the amount of competitions that football is doing in a year, yeah. you don't compare that with volleyball yeah, or basket. Yeah. Because then you have your under 17 somewhere, you yeah, have your yeah, under 20 mm, somewhere, you have your national side playing. Mm. All of them the in categorized the seasons. Oh, yeah. And they're going out all the time and you're spending money on each one of them. Mm. Mm. So the numbers will eventually change. Mm. Even the interest. Mm -hmm. Today, if you sell this football, the stadium, yeah, even in Ramadan, even, even tonight. Uh, Organize yeah. a volleyball match or a volleyball, a basketball, basketball match. Basketball. Small. Yeah. If you follow Facebook the, discourse, the people are more interested in football. If yeah. you post something on football, you see a lot, a lot of people, people coming. Yeah. It's it's more, it's, it's, but volleyball is so that is the difference. And yes, yeah, but we, we must not all fall victim to that and neglect the athletics. No, we are not, no, no. No, we are not neglecting. Mr. Athletics what we used doing? to be big. Absolutely. No, no, yeah. Athletics used to be big. Yes. Yes. The other part that also maybe again, and I've told these people the issues I said. Associations also matters. Mm -hmm. The GFF yeah. is more organized. How organized, yes. Have support from FIFA yeah. and some of those issues. Mm -hmm. the, the basketball mm -hmm. is in trouble. The executive oh, is not, you know, yeah, it's a yeah, problem. They're, they're not Volleyball, they have a stable executive, but yeah. maybe they do not have a proper structure. Proper structure. Not like a proper office setup and all of those things. Yeah. So sometimes also, oh, it's about the association's yeah, management. Yeah, management. Because ministry, yeah, I used to, what, we, what I used to call in the you know in the press briefcase association. Yeah. Yes, so we man. cannot manage association. The association mm. manage themselves, mm. and when they need support, that's when they come to us to support. Mm. But if you're not even organized, mm. I saw somebody yesterday posted something and said because we announced that we're doing this ministerium in for a, uh, in yeah. SL and SL. Kaur, mm. and he said, why are you doing football, active uh, basketball, and Resident football are the only? Mm. What, what about combat sport? And he, he meant on karate and right. boxing and all that. Yeah, yeah. But where are the associations arts. responsible for this? Martial arts, you know, sports, yes. They need to come together. Come if together. the executive is not doing well, yeah. remove them and put in a new body. Right. Let them start initiating in fact, in something. Fact, I, I see private you know martial art clubs more active more, more, than, than even the federation yeah. yeah so the problems are bigger problem, than yeah. us it's not us it's, it's them mm -hmm. putting their house in order and getting themselves organized mm -hmm. then because they are registered yeah then yeah. if they get them organized then it's easier for us to support mm -hmm. but apart from that mm -hmm. as a ministry mm -hmm. as a government we are interested in all disciplines of sport right. and we are ready to support all of them Recently, I met the Paralympics. Yes, they're doing well now. Very, very, very well. And they went out to participate in the they went, they competition. Had. They already gave and us Tunisia. a budget about one million something for them to go to Morocco and somewhere else. Yeah, and we are ready to support that mm -hmm. because they are organized and they're yeah. ready to come up and do something. And they are the same thing with volleyball. They went to Nigeria, came back. Mm -hmm. We had a meeting. They yeah. came back, mm -hmm. and we said, okay, we will ask a compensation. We'll give you half a million dollars mm -hmm. for for the team, mm -hmm. and we are ready to support them in the upcoming games. Mm -hmm. That is what we want all the associations to do. We cannot provide. Mm -hmm all the things they need mm -hmm. but if they're organized and they they need support we will even the wrestling mm -hmm. recently they, they organized their congress they mm -hmm. want to organize a regional congress we told them they will support they don't have the funds mm -hmm. but after that they need to put their houses in order mm -hmm. and organize even and and so that the revenue mm -hmm. that comes from those competitions they organize I they also keep it to, yeah. and plow back into the sport Plus, yeah. but not for some executive people to yeah. take it and use and, it, and on use something it on personal. something yeah. so these are the issues that we all need to regulate sport council is responsible for that but they are overwhelmed. They are Absolutely. doing their best, mm -hmm. but you know there are a lot of work that needs to be done internally within the organizations themselves. Good. Yeah, now, I, I want to have yes. a question for Mr. C.C. and Jan. Okay. Mm -hmm. You talked about the, the, the parastatals and other institutions and their contributions towards this. I was wondering, what challenge do you want to tax the Gambian populace, the fans, the people of this country? Because I think even buying a cell alone could contribute significantly which is ongoing so I guess. Keeping, keeping this conversation alive is important but what is yeah, I mean, I, 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 um, I mean, this is, this is, I mean, I know whenever um, the honourable minister is ready with the federation in terms of um, the, the, the road to Cameroon, if it's going to be the, 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 the name that's going to be used and to brand, I mean, whatever needs to be done in getting the team, I um, mean, preparing them for a successful tournament in Cameroon would encompass all these things. Of course, national, I mean, replica sets would sell. They are available right now, but we need more, for example. And I think they are being sold at, I mean, thousand dollars is each, mm -hmm. you know, which is which is even cheap, yes, uh, which is very cheap. Yeah, yeah comparative, you know, I mean, comparatively to an, an England set. Why don't you we need take to a Senegal example? When they qualified for the first time in 1986, yeah. Even the market women, students, everybody had some. Yeah, we, 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 we're coming Maybe to that. What is happening is that, I mean, this was the first consignment. These were supposed to be here uh, before the our last, our final game, hoping that the, the stadium will be opened to the public ah, well, so that, course, you know, we would have brand, I mean, the, the stadium red in young yeah. and home, yeah. home jerseys. I mean, it came late, and of course, COVID restrictions also didn't help. Yeah. But as you suggested, I don't want to get the, the, the 
card out of the, the, the box at the moment right now. And um, we are waiting. There's a lot of thought being done. I myself, I've been thinking quite hard as to how do we get the best of campaigns. Mm -hmm. uh, we had the road to Peru earlier on in here. We had the Gambia for Gold earlier Gambia on. Gambia for Gold and you know, all like those things. Lots of things, but we need to be innovative. A new brand um, now. A, a new brand. And I mean, this is what um, I mean. I, I believe the Honorable Minister and team really I mean, we're able to yeah. brainstorm, I mean, really to put up a team that's going to represent Gambit, that's going to be accessible to everybody, that the people recognize, that have an influence, that can make you and I chip mm. in, um, yeah, they you can know, produce I mean, beautifully, uh, cups. I mean, to make sure that we get the amount of money needed. Mm. And let's be very honest, and I'm going to say this thing here, the government cannot provide the money needed for our campaign to mm. Cameroon. It's very difficult. The government cannot, let's be honest. Mm. So the government would do their part. You and I would have to do their part, mm. our part, and the entire, I mean, uh, I mean, population of this country. Every single stakeholder, every citizen has a part to play. Because remember, the team is ours. Mm -hmm. It's ours. Absolutely. And the moment we have that in our minds, that yeah. this is ours, it's not me putting on a Barcelona start or a Real Madrid. That doesn't mean anything to anything me, for example. Yeah. My national colors means anything to me. If it's costing $10,000, I'll buy it as a support to put it on and go to town with it. But none of those things matters. And this is what I think we should be able to share mm. with the general public. And of course, this football young loving, I mean, football loving people of this country that, you know what, we have ours right now. Mm -hmm. Why do we care about others? What is Barcelona to you? What is Manchester to you? Not those it. people are doing their own thing. They have their monies well, 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 well loaded. A single individual Manchester, Paul Pogba's monthly wages would do us a, would go Absolutely. a long way. <laughs> a long way for our campaign. Absolutely. Who cares about him? Mm -hmm. You know, so for example, these are the things. Yes, we will. I think. I mean, I mean, the honourable minister will tell you. Really, a lot of thought is being put in this. Football House executive will tell you a lot of thought is being put in this. Mm -hmm. So I sincerely believe that when the announcement is made, the men and women whose responsibility is it to work on behalf of Gambia would be up to it to make sure that what is desired is achieved. Finally, honourable minister, I give you the honour to close to make the, these closing <laughs> <laughs> remarks. Uh -oh. um, well, you're, I mean, for the very first year, you obviously qualified for the Nations Cup, um, African Nations Cup. The next target, well, in athletics, they will say we want the world champion, a medal in the world championship or the Olympics. Jam, jam, big, yes, correct. The what's happening is that the draw is going to be on the 25th of June. June yeah. um, next month, I mean, we will know who we are playing, we will know where we're going to be based. Yes. So that's going to set more light on this thing. Yeah. By ninth January, so. I mean, we should be able to. I think by the fourth or first week of January, we should we be able to, to leave, leave here. Yeah. Um, I mean, travel in grand style with a big farewell yeah. um, to, to yes. Cameroon. Yes. Which city we don't know yet. So this is all those all, all the all these are in the planning, yeah. and, and they will all have <laughs> budget <laughs> implications. Oh, oh yes, big time. Yeah. Yeah. Good. So what would be your message now, finally? Oh, well, no, just to, to like I said, thank the population, mm -hmm. the, the gaming population, the government and everyone. Um, as you said, it, this has been a long term campaign and I keep saying it, we're not taking credit for anything. Mm -hmm. We just came in, picked up from where people stopped and just continue to work and mm -hmm. then, you know, we, we got the results. But, you know, moving forward, we want to remain there, we mm -hmm. want to be uh, frequent yeah. appearance. You know the World Cup qualifiers. Is, the expanded uh, is World coming. Cup is the next thing. It's the next thing. Yeah, it's coming yeah. up. You know, and that's why there was this issue about the coach <laughs> and all that. Yeah, and we absolutely. said that's what we're looking at. Looking, looking at, at Gambia's qualifying now yeah. that you have an increased number of mm -hmm. African World Cup countries. Yes. Yeah. You know, we're hoping that Gambia would be part all of it. Of them, but the focus now is the the African in general. Mm -hmm. You know, we want to raise as much resources as possible, put up all the necessary plans in place, mm -hmm. and that cannot happen by government. Rate. It has to be everybody, uh, the media, the the population, the Gambia population, the parastatals and all of them yeah. and we once we launch the campaign which you know the president would likely do yeah. you know we hope that uh, people will come and support but otherwise we just want to appreciate everyone's support so far and <laughs> just uh, ask Gambians to continue supporting our national team and, and, and you know the, the recent turnout in the football at the stadium yeah the uh, for me it's a renewed it's a so of so a reflection of the you know, of uh, the interest people have got. Exactly. I only so hope it will last. I hope it the Ramadan, continues. Because the Ramadan well, has we, a factor. <laughs> well, we hopefully yes, yes. Yeah. So. And, well, but, they have uh, to, and they have to pay. Yes. Yeah. They have and to you know, pay. Oh, that's true. They have to pay. Yeah. But otherwise, you know, thank I you said, for inviting us. I said, us I said finally, but not not we are not quite, we are not quite done. <laughs> oh, There's okay. one question, and this one is definitely oh. the final question. Right. Okay. The issue is it's been. 
three months, or, uh, it's been a month or two since the boys qualified, and the expectation you see is that the government will come with some grand, you know, incentive mm. and announce for the national team uh, during the time of Jamme, you know, we, we were t dealing with uh, properties and millions of dollars, everybody was turned into a millionaire <laughs> in the under 17. <laughs> yeah. It's been weeks now, if not months, that since we qualified, and your government is yet to come with a package. People yes. asking what, what, what's keeping you. Uh, what is keeping us is yeah, the, yeah. the amount of time that it has taken uh, for uh, us to uh, complete the consultation. Oh, 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 but honorarium is not a popular one these days. <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> no, no. One thing is assured that we would we would definitely give mm. the players or the team mm. some kind of a compensation. Okay. Um, yeah, okay, sometimes it's easy for the minister to decide. Mm. Now, some things goes beyond the minister. Because when we came back from uh, when the under-17 mm -hmm. won the, the, the WAFU mm -hmm. in Zone A in yeah. Senegal, yes, yes. it was easy because then I can sit down and say, okay, we will give you two yeah. million. Oh, okay. yeah. And we, 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 the president organized that ceremony at the state house and handed that to them. Yes. It was easy. easy. Right now, the under-20, we already said we, we, we promised 2.5 million to them for reaching the, the semi-final yeah. and the, uh, the, the, the board, African, the 500,000. Uh, yeah. Those are things that probably I might have the prerogative to say. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to a magnitude, the, 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 um, uh, the magnitude involved in the national team qualified for yeah. Afghan, wow. that goes above me. Oh, okay. yeah. And the amount involved would be too much yeah. to a level that I need to just think about oh, it. That's, that's good news. Some people listening, if you yeah. say the amount yeah. is too much. Yeah, yeah, yeah but of course. You. Well, you know, the Minister of Finance needs to be in the involved. Picture. The President needs Absolute, to be. Yeah. The Minister of Local Government, the I Minister mean, of Lands. Yeah. Needs to be oh, involved. well. Then and we are <laughs> consulting. You are? You, yeah. So yeah. there would be hopefully an amount, which is a sort, amount of money given to them. Okay. Now we look looking for extra, extra you know the lands and all that okay. probably when we get that yeah. then we will announce it but we couldn't do it when they were here okay and we were told that the next time they will be here is in june june yeah so that's why the newspaper said we said the boys wouldn't know anything until june we didn't say that we didn't say that what we said is we will announce a package for them okay. but because they are not here yeah. we will hand it over to them when okay. they come back here in june mm. fantastic and the yes. other thing to make clarity to clarify yeah. i mean for the under 17 and the under 20 you know mm. these are these are these are teams that carry i mean that are not to be paid for anything yeah. these are deve developmental level in yeah, football so they don't carry yeah. a wage or yeah. anything it's yeah. just a simple honorarium yeah. um but the, the mindful a, honorarium is not a popular word. no 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 it's, it's a popular word. i don't <laughs> mind being called an honorarium for the yeah. job i do oh, okay. and for the okay. job i do i want my honorarium okay. paid in full okay. and we, we have to be very clear because the thing is we have the misunderstanding as always in most of the things that we do mm -hmm. these youngsters are talking about them need to be paid mm -hmm. no 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 oh, you okay, are not okay. to be paid for playing football but at that, this level those categories. don't allow your parents to put it in your head mm -hmm. your friends or others no 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 mm -hmm. at developmental level, level yeah. there is no pay yeah. i look at ten dollars in my pocket that's what you're doing thank you well done for the job well done yeah. that's what it is good thank you very much uh the honorable bakari baggy thank you very much for sharing your time with uh, the brunch on Kerfato Live. Uh, Omar Malmo. Uh, well, you know, uh, you know what I was Sambu? What, what happened is that he was born right in my presence, but I keep forgetting his surname all the time. His father, his father was, uh, was much more familiar. Okay, Omar Malmo Sambu. Thank you very much, an environmental scientist uh, from the University of the Gambia. Thank you very much for sharing your perspective. And of course, yes, uh, Musa Asise from the Sports Journalist Association. And thank you very much for extended uh, uh, version you the technicians we will be back next week and i'm sure subsequently we'll have more of uh, the honorable uh, minister on this platform thank you very much sir thank you thank you goodbye thank you. Communication, connectivity is everything. We ensure that the links 
never sleep. Quantities and qualities, all in our data service, providing efficient, reliable voice and data service. We believe if you're not up to speed, then you're going backwards. Communications have to flow as fast as the speed of light. Whatever business you're in, having someone who understands your needs is critical. That is why we just don't offer you technology, we offer you solutions. Enjoy Gumsel's internet broadband anytime, anywhere. Your national operator, Gumsel, Yaibarom. For all your pastry, bakery, and quality food, CK Restaurant is the only place to be. We do catering for birthdays, weddings, and all related services. We have all kinds of local foods, American, European, and even beyond. Come and have a taste of our local juice, ebay and other services. At CK Restaurant, customer satisfaction is our priority. We live in a day and age where technology is creating a world without borders filled with unlimited potential to improve the lives of the people around us. InnovaRex Global Health ushers in a new way of leveling the playing field with increased access to quality healthcare services delivered at your doorstep. Our qualified professionals are equipped with state-of-the-art point-of-care testing technology to conduct tests such as kidney function, liver function, electrolyte tests, body composition, hemoglobin, A1C, and many more services with the highest efficiency in delivering results. The addition to our flagship Wellness on Wheels, more fondly known as WOW Delivery Service, brings the entire clinical experience full circle. IGH has remained committed to creating the future of healthcare delivery. Gone are the days of sending loved ones outside the country for basic medical services. Innovarex Global Health offers a new peace of mind and takes pride in delivering the quality of care we all deserve.